Hello, everyone. I'm not racing today because I'm doing commentary instead to make sure that someone here knows what's going on and can uh, get you guys through this together as a group. Exactly. So as you can see, we actually didn't go for um, custom trackers for now because uh, yeah, we still need to figure out a few quirks with this and we also need a few volunteers to do uh, the tracking work. So for now we'll just use the on-screen trackers. I know it's quite small, but it's still better than not having anything at all. We're still working on how to make these um, weeklies as good as possible um, without like burning through a shit ton of volunteers. So yeah. Oh, right. ZSR is a lot more... I'm used to commentary where I'm not allowed to curse. <laughs> nah, don't, wor don't worry about that. Like, I want you to right. be at ease with what you do. Um... Alright. Oh. Starting off strong here. Uh... Looks like there are some OBS issues for Jangler. As soon as he gets those uh, worked out here, we'll be good to go. Yeah, should be any second. Yeah. So, I guess before we start, those... I mean, there's lots of randos on ZSR. So you've seen many a randomizer. Most of you probably understand the gist of a randomizer as a concept. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll, we'll get into sort of the things that are unique to seasons with regards to randomization. And how it all to be comes fair, together. I actually don't know anything about the f seasons, uh, Rando. Like, of course, I know his seasons, but um, the Rando <laughs> actually is something I have not even touched so far. So I'm looking well, forward to this. This will be a good. It'll be a good. Um, since this is the first one, that uh, there'll be a lot of education and uh, explaining of of how seasons works since i know that in general seasons isn't as big as uh like you know vanilla seasons isn't as big as vanilla ocarina of time so there's a lot of uh knowledge to be dropped about the game in general and then how the randomizer messes with those things <laughs> And as we want to, uh, or as we started to get into this thing, actually, our proxy server for the stream started to take a huge dump. So yeah, great. Uh, but let's hope it stays stable. It's not been a good, sh a good day for restreaming on Twitch for whatever reason. Twitch today is really unstable. <laughs> Are we good to go, Jangler? I don't know. He's streaming. Jangler says he's streaming again. <clears throat> Let me... I'm gonna refresh the commentary page. <coughs> yeah, I'm also refreshing Jangler's stream, because... Yeah. There he is. Alright. Oh, Alright. Let me know when you're good on your end and I will remove myself. Alright. 
only one remaining. That's me. Am I good to drop out? Come on, let's start. All right. Okay. And runners starting. Here we go. Shortly. Ugh. It is fame. Okay. Runners, off to the races. First thing you're going to see, and this is true of <clears throat> seasons as a game in general, the sort of crux of seasons is that there are four seasons, wow, that uh, have different effects on the world and change the landscape and our runners are going to need to navigate. So the randomizer goes ahead and randomizes the season for each uh area that has a season change. It's not super randomized in the sense that uh, every time you go there the season's randomized, but it's a one-time randomized set. So the default in the beach that they were just at is normally is winter, so that's vanilla in that case, but it's gonna change on a one-to-one -one basis. Starting out you have one check that you can head out to through the Harrow's Cave to get what would be the Vanilla Sword. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Vanilla Sword uh, here either. As it's a pretty normal starting item. But yeah, so the, the, the main crux of what makes Oracle of Seasons unique has to do with that Seasons mechanic. Um, where the four seasons have different effects on the terrain. Summer dries up lakes and creates vines. Springs makes uh, flowers grow and you can jump through them. And we are getting vanilla swords all around for everyone. Which is going to open up at the start two checks here. You're going to watch as uh, we head into the side of the other chest in Hero's Cave that people are not familiar with all the time. And we get bombs! A, sto a sword bomb start is the most classic of a rando start that you can get. <laughs> it's uh, not terribly surprising. Particularly in a normal seed, uh, there are normal logic and hard logic builds of the randomizer. And hard logic has some extra little quirks that it can end in, particularly with the use of the shovel. Uh, because you can do rupee manips with your shovel and off of hard resets. You can uh, do a hard reset, roll your RNG, and, and dig up rupees when you need to. But this is normal logic because it's a weekly and it's more uh, accessible. That's the buzzword that we use. It's more accessible for everyone if, if we're not using those hard, uh, hard techs. Accessible. So you saw both. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Uh, you saw all of our runners go into the shop there. The rightmost item, that 150 item, is randomized because it's a one-time item. It's In vanilla, it's a ring, I believe. Um, the shops themselves are randomized when it comes to single purchase items, but anything that's repeatedly purchased is not randomized at this point. Um, although I know Jangler has mentioned the potential for that change in the future as... The randomizer itself is, at this point, probably five months old. So it's not super, it, it was started, it's relatively new in the grand scheme, but not terribly new at the same time, but it's been growing and changing ever so often. As our runner's dragon, obviously, uh, in the lead, which is not unexpected here, picking up the slingshot and heading to the Eastern suburbs. The other big feature of seasons, so you have one, which is the shifting seasons, two, which is going to be these seeds. So whereas a lot of other 2D Zelda games have things like the 
magic powder, which can light torches, or the Pegasus boots, which can make you run fast. The Oracle games have Ember seeds, which can burn things, and Pegasus seeds, which you can use to boost your speed for a short amount of time. So you're going to see uh, those trees. There are trees that you can collect the seeds from. Those trees, their seeds are randomized as well from vanilla. As we make our way into the underworld of uh, Seasons, which is called Sabrosia, where we have these little hooded Jawa looking uh, creatures called Sabrosians who like to dance and bathe in lava and, you know, have a good time, wear bows once in a while. So you see Heret deciding to opt for a slightly different route here. We're going to see the other three runners probably go to where Heret is right now um, afterwards, but they're just swapping the order a little bit here. This is one of the very few uh, Seasons minigames. Ages is notorious for being the minigame oracles. This is not uh, quite as bad as anything that is in Ages. But Heret picking up the feather. Which is going to be super sick. So obviously, with the more items you get early on, true of any randomizer, as they get more items at an earlier point, the more that opens up. So at this point, they've all been fairly linear and um, straightforward as far as where they've been going. They've been going to the same places. But with the Feather, we have sort of two different routes now that players could be going down. We could have them continue in Subrosia after these t temples that they're in right now. Or we could see them leave Sabrosia and try to head towards the D2 area uh, to try and pick up some items there. At this point, they wouldn't be able to clear D2 because they do need the power bracelet. Uh, but if they do find power bracelet, you're probably going to see them prioritize D2 over going to the other half of Sabrosia. But I don't believe... Yeah, no, Hered didn't pick up uh, bracelet here. So you're seeing Heret grind for some ore chunks. Prioritizing the uh, shop down here. Subrosians have a special currency called like for the ore chunks, and you can spend them in the market to get three items that are randomized. Um, didn't go to check the shop first. So what he's doing instead here is picking up 25 ore chunks for the simple reason that the shop sells Pegasus seeds. Um, this is actually super interesting. Uh, the So the shop sells Pegasus seeds behind that shield that Heret just picked up. The other two, the other three players won't have to pick up that shield because they already have the level two shield, which will erase the shield from the uh, market altogether. The, that little triangle gem that you saw Heret pick up and the other runners are going to be looking into shortly here is one of the four gems that you need to access Dungeon 6. They unlock an area called the Tarm Ruins, which leads to the Lost Woods, which you need. You need four gems, all four seasons, uh, and a couple of other items to get to D6. So that's one of the four keys they'll need. Dungeon 6 is the dungeon that's going to have the most sort of external requirements to get to over any of the other dungeons. So tell me, uh, for a complete noob to this randomizer like me, mm -hmm. um, is there like a, like a standard route that everybody goes in the beginning or like? So it's, there are two main routes that end up happening. There's this route, which you're seeing right here, which can vary a little bit, where you get early uh, ember seeds. Because early ember seeds means you can burn the tree in order to get access to this eastern side of the world. All right. Um, and or you can potentially get early flippers or early Dimitri flute. Um, so there's a flute system in the game. <laughs> And there are three animal companions. There's a punching, pump, punchy, jumpy kangaroo, a swimming dodongo, and a flying bear. So if you get the uh, swimming dodongo, Dimitri, you get, or you have your flippers, you get access to the western side of the world. Um, 
which because there's water blocking it off. So that's typically the two major routes is either left or right side of the map. Um, but it's not shocking to see early D2 in most seeds that you're going to play through. D2 is going to be your first dungeon, which is where Dragon is right now. Um, and you, you're sort of seeing the effects of different routes here. Heret taking the... I don't know whether or not Dragon had good luck early on with grinding uh, or chunks or just decided not to worry about it, but he is sort of pulled ahead pretty far despite Heret taking a slightly different route here. But yeah, so the, those are the two main routes that we see. Right. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, like, um... I, I really don't know enough to, like, know how far one is ahead or behind, but it's just interesting to, interesting to see uh, how, like, every single rando these days has, like, two major beginning routes. Seems to be the, the same thing for, like, every single Zelda rando. Which is kind of yeah, kind of crazy. It is, it's a little interesting to, to see how it ends up, or to see how that pans out. With, especially with a rando like uh, Seasons, because both the Oracles have uh, Seasons exactly, but Ages mostly. These two have all their dungeons required, which I know isn't the case for, like, Link to the Past, or for Zooter, or, uh, uh, those are the two that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, particularly because of that, because all dungeons are required, there's a much more... You can go through an Ocarina of Time run and not do, you know, 30% of the checks, 35% of the checks, depending on your seed. If you get a really quick seed, you can skip a lot of the game, um, and your route like the the mid route of a zooter seed is going to be a lot more uh depend your rear route changes drastically based on where you go whereas yeah. with the oracle games it's a lot more focused on uh not so much on what you're skipping but just what path how you're taking your your pieces of the puzzle and how you're arranging them so instead of you know throwing 30 percent of your pieces out you can you're sort of just rearranging and rotating them to figure out how they best fit in the puzzle this time. So, yeah, it's 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 a little bit it's a different rando appeal and sort of uh, just gameplay, I think, than others um, to some extent. Dragon though, picking up flippers. So we have we have early on at this point we're less than 15 minutes in. We have flippers, feather. And we have Slingshot with Ember Seeds, which are going to be the most useful in combination with the the Ember Seeds. Or with the, yeah, with Slingshot. So the world at this point um, is getting pretty open. I'm trying to figure out what, oh, I see. So flippers are going to allow us to get a couple checks that Dragon's doing right now, just uh, surrounded by water, obviously, and we're probably going to see him head towards the western side of the world now because he has those flippers and uh, hasn't gone over there, and there's a couple of quick checks that you can do. And once once the runners sort of... it With seasons, there's a very quick swap from what can I do to what am I missing for each dungeon? It's And it happens pretty quickly depending on how early you get your sort of overworld items, which like the main overworld items that have a big impact are bracelet, feather, and flippers. With those three, you get access to a, a pretty significant part of the world. And then it becomes a matter of finding dungeon items and deciding which dungeons are worth dipping partially. Um, the go items, so the necessary items to finish a season's rando are you need a sword, you need the level two boomerang, you need a bracelet, you need rocks, cape, you need the magnet glove, you need either, oh no, this is normal logic, so you need both the seed satchel and the level two slingshot, and of course, and then you would need all four seasons with the rod of seasons. And the, the Rod of Seasons is 
again to sort of control that. Uh, when you step upon a stump, you can swing the Rod of Seasons to change the season to whichever seasons you have. And you saw both Dragon and all th three of our runners outside of Jangler all have found the level two Rock's Feather, the Rock's Cape, which is um, uh, objectively, and I say this sincerely, objectively the best 2D Zelda item. And it's okay to have another opinion, but you're wrong. But that's fine. Um, <laughs> that's, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, so the, the Rock's Cape is gonna give us a double jump and the Rock's Cape in a vanilla run, we don't get the Rock's Cape until Dungeon 7. So getting the Rock's Cape before we have any essences is going to break open how the runners are going to be able to do a lot of these earlier dungeons. If you've ever seen a vanilla Seasons speedrun, or you've played through yourself at some point and you have some sort of recollection, you're going to sort of see how different the game is. Um, becomes, or how different those dungeons, routing-wise, can become. Um, yeah. The, the pet patty, the pet, so your animal companion is, it really depends on the seed. The animal companions that are the most useful are Ricky, the kangaroo, is probably, eh, it really depends on your seed. Ricky and Dimitri, the Dodongo, Ricky the Kangaroo and Dimitri the Dodongo are the most useful companions. Moosh, despite being the best animal companion from a aesthetic standpoint, is uh, not terribly useful for the purposes of Rando because his region, his animal region, is uh, very unwieldy and terrible to get through, and he just doesn't benefit much. Ricky is useful because he can jump up cliffs that you normally would need vines to climb up. Um, and you're, if you watch the runners, Jangler in particular right now, climbing up vines, like in a situation where those vines weren't there, Ricky would be able to jump up, uh, which is just a good time save. And it allows you to skip over needing summer in that situation. Um, so Ricky's a kangaroo, right? Yeah, Ricky's the kangaroo with the boxing gloves. He's that's, a punchy, punchy boy. That's definitely the best companion. Just, <laughs> just from the looks. Just from the aesthetic. Yeah. There's a, there's a widespread distaste for Ricky and the, for a lot of the speedrunners because uh, when you're trying to jump with Ricky and like move around, he moves very non-friendly. He like weirdly jumps around, but he's, he's, you know, he can, you can respect that. Um. A normal, so it, it really depends on your skill level with a, the seasons rando. Most, every seed, if you have the skill level, like dragon, dragon is, can't do a seed in over two and a half hours. If he's just like actually just trying to finish it. So dragon will always sub 230 every seed. Um, same with Heret as well. And every seed can be sub 230 and probably sub two hours, 20 minutes. Um, maybe with some outliers, but definitely sub 230 at the top level. And then I believe that uh, Dragon's best time is a 149. Dang, that's actually impressive yeah yeah and that that was that's like a one time like he's done it once and it was a very good seed for that but the the variance that you're gonna get with seasons is probably around a half hour um so on an average sub three sub three for your average seasons player or for your like your average playthrough after you do a couple seeds like after you do four or five seeds any under three hours is pretty consistent uh so we're seeing dragon who has picked up picked up the d1 key Heret has it as well but dragon's currently inside dungeon one which we have more than enough items to beat as, you know, typically we only need our Ember Seeds and a sword. Um, yeah. Chandler is rich. 
that's actually right quite now. hard for me to follow. There's so much happening. It is. There's a, there's a lot that happens with Seasons Rando, and it's pretty quick. It's a fairly quick-paced game. But the important things right now are Dragon inside D1. Uh... And Heret seems to be heading towards D1 as well, so Heret's going to be following behind Dragon in that regard. Dying in the rando at an early point is pretty common, particularly because you can end up getting... So realistically, you can get to Dungeon 8. Dungeon 8 could be required for you to do with three hearts. Um, it's never happened to us. I think the, the the lowest we've gotten is like five hearts, four or five, maybe four. But that that is entirely a thing that could happen. So death in a rando is not as unexpected for seasons. I, I'm not too familiar with anything other than Zooter, so I don't know how often that kind of thing occurs in other of the of the randos. But it happens. It's it's not uncommon. Um, so you saw Dragon pick up both the seed satchel and the Ricky's Flute. So we know that... We already knew if, if we were paying attention, the area that uh, above the Boxer's house was set up with a bunch of cliffs. That was so that Ricky could jump around. And based on what animal you have, you're going to get a different zone up there. Um, but yeah, so Seed Satchel's great. And the reason you're, why it's great at this point is because the runners have both Pegasus Seeds and Rockscape and they haven't beaten any dungeons yet. So Rockscape on its own helps break things, but Pegasus Seeds plus Rockcape and you have all eight dungeons on your plate really, really are going to speed up a lot of these earlier dungeons. Particularly, you're going to see a very different Dungeon 3 when we get to Dungeon 3 and Dungeon 5. Um, those two dungeons in particular are going to be very different. And Dungeon 6. Uh, how we route those dungeons in a rando is very, very different from how a vanilla game would run because a lot of the season's dungeons are not quite as linear, are not terribly linear in design. They just bank on people. Um, they just, because they, they work off of the assumption that there's a lot of redundancy with regards to you needing to find the dungeon item to progress. So we can abuse that since we are randomized. And we see three of our runners are in D1 right now. Uh, Dragon's inside, or Dragon's about to hit the boss, Aquamentis, and clean up. Because he has cape, he can jump up and do damage before Aquamentis lands, which is obviously not something you'd be able to do normally. And you see that Aquamentis dies super super quickly as a result. <laughs> and you saw a little bit of hesitation there on uh, picking up the bananas that <laughs> were on his screen. And he decided not to because, ooh, because uh, he has the cape and the pegasus seeds. And the cape plus pegasus seeds makes the spring bananas unnecessary because normally the bananas would allow you to use Moosh, the flying bear, to get to an area that is covered with holes. But you can just jump over the holes because you have the cape, so you don't need the bananas anymore. Um, and right now we're getting quick into a... into a dungeon... potential dungeon. Oh no, they don't have access to D5 yet. That's my fault. So, uh, in order... The rando is about five months old. A worst seed has not been created. And... Yeah. So right now, Dragon's gonna be fishing for... Power Bracelet. Power Bracelet's the next big item that... I think... All the runners are gonna be looking for just because Bracelet's going to unlock the ability to finish D2, complete D5 entirely. Uh, yeah, so th those two are going to be important.
And then it's going to be a lot of hunting for keys. A lot of these overworld keys. So you see, if you look at like the third line on Dragon's layout, his tracker layout, he has the D1 key, that gnarled brownish key. The D3 key is next to that, and the D4 key is next to that. The four gems are for D6, and the bell is for D7. So there's a lot of entrance keys that are necessary to enter dungeons. So you can have a situation where you might have a lot of your items, and this happens pretty often with Dungeon 6 in particular, because there are so many key requirements that you can have all your items and only be looking for an overworld key as a go item, which is, uh, you know, it's a thing. It's a thing that can happen. Uh... So, okay, so there's a slight split here. We saw Dragon head back into Sabrosia to do some Sabrosia checks. The same Sabrosia checks that Jangler did out of logic. They're now being done in logic by Dragon. Meanwhile, Haret has decided to go through the what's called the Natsu region, which is where, with Ricky right now. And this region that he's in changes depending on which animal you have. So if he had Dimitri, it would be fill of, filled with water and he'd be swimming. And if it was Moosh, then he would be flying over holes. But so he's going to be hopping around and heading towards the sunken city area to pick up both a seed tree, which could be useful. Uh, actually, he already has Gales, so this is an interesting play. Just a different different routing requirement, or different different routing, very different route here from for these two. Um, the seasons rando does not require. So there's an except there's a normal like a normal difficulty for the randomizer, which is a consider which would be the equivalent of like an accessible which requires no speedrunning knowledge and no tricks or anything. Um, and then there's a hard mode. Seasons doesn't have any glitches. Seasons, that's not true. Seasons has two glitches in the entire game. One of them is a only available in Japanese, which can't be done. And one of them is um, a clip where you, you just bump into a wall and then grab a rooster. So it's not uh, a huge, a huge thing. You see Jangler and Dragon picking up the Rod of Seasons at the same exact time there, <laughs> despite being in very uh, different points in their respective seeds, different essence counts and all that. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're completely casual and you, you're not familiar with anything tech-wise in Seasons, a normal logic Season Seed is entirely completable. It might take you a while if you're not familiar with the game, I know that some of the people that have first started out, it has taken them like, you know, five or six hours to do their first seed. But after you do your first couple of seeds, as with any randomizer, after you do your first couple of seeds, you really cut down the time pretty quickly. Um, and a lot of people go from like five hours on their first seed or six hours on their first seed down to like three hours by their third or fourth seed. That's actually really short. Like even starting off with six hours seems like absolutely fine right right it, it is a it is definitely a smaller world and and this is this is only really true of seasons there is also an ages randomizer that is part of the same jangler jangler created both of them and they're both in one program right now the ages randomizer if you're not familiar with ages could take you well longer um uh because of how Ages is set up land-wise, Seasons has the benefit of a couple of things. One is the Subrosian area, that underworld, is very interconnected with the overworld. So there's a lot of different ways to get to different places in the world um, in a way that is... It's a little confusing if it requires you to do something that you're not used to, but as soon as you become aware of the fact that you can get to the same place three different ways you figure out 
oh, okay, this is going to be the quickest in this situation, and I have these sort of benefits from doing it this way, and I have this item set, so I can do these things. There's a lot of, um, I want to say item redundancy or item overlap, where you can get items late that are, you can get a lot of items that cover the requirements to get places that would sort of in vanilla be another item's use. So in a lot of cases, having Pegasus Seeds plus your Rock's Cape means that your Magnet Glove isn't going to be as useful or means that Moosh isn't going to be as useful. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff that can happen, which makes for a lot of variation, which can be confusing early on, but also helps you learn more quickly because you have so many different opportunities and different ways of accessing things, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so, for me, help me out here. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, um, Redman and Mashi are using the Ema Tracker. What are Jangler and Dragon using? Because that looks so, a lot better for... They're using... Because <laughs> Jangler, Jangler, I believe he runs on Linux, and Emo Tracker doesn't work for Linux, so he developed his own just little web-based web -based tracker. Um, and it comes included with the randomizer download. Oh, so okay. if you download the randomizer, it's just in there, and it's just a little HTML page that comes up, and you can just select it. So it's it is nice for people that can't run Emo Tracker for whatever reason. Um, although it doesn't have the the benefit of the Emo Tracker, especially for people starting out, is that the Emo Tracker pack has a map tracker. Uh, so it it has the logic in for opening up the world as you get items and such, and can tell you what you can and can't do based on that. So it's, it's, yeah, that's the trade-off there. So what do we got here? Do a quick, quick recap here of where everyone's at, our different item spreads. I know that Jangler broke logic early on, which didn't benefit him. And it's, it's, anytime you break logic in any randomizer is a pretty big risk. Um, but it didn't pay off at all for Jangler, it seems, as he doesn't have anything that anyone else is missing. All of our runners have picked up the Rusty Bell that, uh, except for Heret. Uh, no, Heret does have it as well. So that red bell, the red cracked bell that you'll see in the top right of uh, Mashi and Heret's stream, and the sort of the third line right side. That is the dungeon seven key. That's the entrance to dungeon seven key. Effectively, it's not technically a key, but you repair that bell with the blacksmith and then you give it to the pirate captain and the pirate captain will take you to the entrance to D7. And that's the only way you can get there. So it is labeled the D7 key, even though it's not technically a key. Um, uh, key Sandy mode is not something that, at least at this point, that Jangler is interested in doing. Uh, there's just more stuff that he's he's interested in uh, developing first. I know things that are being floated right now for future stuff is a sort of um, adaptation. In Vanilla Seasons, there are these owl statues. Yo! Diversion. Uh, Dragon just picked up the power bracelet with uh, that, red, that orange robe subrosion there. That's Rosa. She has a master key that can open any locked door. So we have the uh, the power bracelet here, which is going to give us ability to finish D2 and complete all of D5. So we're likely going to see Dragon head over there as soon as he completes the other check with Rosa here. So the, since there are two Rosa checks, um, and Heret's probably going to follow shortly behind because he's about to find it as well. Um, so I know the next big thing that Jangler is looking to add is a rework to the owl statues. So as of right now, in the vanilla game, the owl statues will like give you hints on puzzles um, sort of thing. And I think that it's being floated the idea of, and typically to, to activate the owl statues, you use your mystery seed. And in the game right now, the mystery seeds only have the use of one check in one check in the overworld and one mini boss, which is not even necessary for that mini boss, technically. Um, 
so there's there's the idea being floated of swapping it to be kind of a hint system sort of thing where the owls can give you information based on uh, give you check information similar to the um i the stones in zooter uh that sort of idea but that's not that's not going to be anytime immediate in the immediate future um but no key sandy on the table as of right now uh so we have dragon here he gave his bell to the captain so he's going to be heading towards d7 oh d 7s open because they have the, the captain uh so he might just go ahead and do d7 because he has everything that he needs for it if i'm correct yeah if i remember correctly let me double check he has a bracelet he has his seeds he has cape and he has a sword Ah, he doesn't have bombs though. So there's a small issue here where he needs to get to that tree stump to be able to change the season because uh, the snow blocks him from getting in and uh, he doesn't have any bombs. So, so much for that idea. So what he's gonna do here is finish D2 instead and probably pick up some bombs uh, inside D2. There's a Deku scrub inside D2 that sells bombs for a price, of course. 30 big fat roops. Mm. We got some Sabrosia travelers. Heret and Dragon seem to be on the same say wavelength as far as their... Oh no! That's funny. Dragon save scum that uh, entire decision, which is a very interesting route choice. I'm not sure what he was going for exactly. Oh, he forgot to buy bombs. That's what he did. He doesn't actually have any bombs. The restream pressure showing there. I know, he's panicking. Yeah. So obviously, as with any randomizer, the there is a a question that you have to ask yourself with regards to how you route, what you prioritize. Um, with you know, dragon dragon decides to prioritize D seven here because getting back to D seven is such a pain. There's he could just easily warp to D2 with the Gale Seeds, because the Gale Seeds allow you to teleport to any other seed tree that you've been to. There's no Gale Seed near D7, the closest one is in the main town. So he uses a bunch of save scumming in order to get the bombs that he needs to move forward, and then just go back to D7, because it's so much easier for him to warp to D2 later. And it's just a good time save. And stuff like this, like that, that that sort of technology, that sort of routing awareness and world awareness is the kind of thing that saves you a lot of time. Like being aware of how the seasons affect the world and how your save and quits can really, really benefit you as far as knowing what spots actually set your save point and um what you can check with and still save scum. Save scumming keys and dungeons is a big one. There's a skip that you're gonna see Dragon do here called post skip, which is something that we do in the uh, vanilla speedrun as well. It's not required in normal logic. No one, you don't need to do it if you do a normal seed, but if you know how to do it, it can benefit you um, pretty greatly because it saves you a key and it just saves you a lot of time overall. And I know that how Dragon routes this dungeon is actually different from how I think a lot of us route it. Because we there's a check that you can do before this trick right here that you can get information from, but Dragon decides to just sort of bur go burst through the dungeon and then check it at the very end if he needs to, which is a riskier play because you're there's the potential that that's like the boss key and it could benefit him to just know that in advance or it could be a progression item but he's also just fine because he trusts his own his own route and his own 
skill level as he gets wrecked by Armos as I say that. Cool commentator's curse. Good talk, everyone. <clears throat> so, um, but yeah. Jangler entering into D7. Following suit. Heret gonna finish up D2. As Mashi's still in Sabrosia. There's a lot of time there. It is, it is an interesting... It's always worrisome. The more time you spend in the overworld as a runner, I think the more you start to get concerned about um, your time and, and how well you're doing just because there's... Because all the dungeons are required and you know that because of that there's a high value in them. You want to try and spend as much time in a dungeon as possible, or try to spend most of your time in dungeons when you can beat them. But sometimes, just based on bad, or not even bad, but just incorrect routing decisions, you can end up losing a lot of time to unnecessary overworld checks when you could be prioritizing dungeon checks. There's just a much higher value there. Uh... Yeah, so Heret here taking care of Dodongo, our, our little King Dodongo. Throwing him into some spikes. Ending his career. Dragon on low hearts. Dragons on low hearts pretty often. Uh, he plays very loose and fast with the rules, and uh, many a time when, when playing with Dragon, you will hear him exclaim that he did not realize that he was as low as he was with hearts. That's just how he is. So Heret picking up the D2 essence. So as of right now, technically Heret has a an essence lead because he has two as opposed to everyone else having one. No, Jangler doesn't have one. Jangler hasn't done the check yet. So the D1 key is in a single check in um, Goron Mountain, uh, there was a chest blocked by some lava and a bomb blast that he needed to do. He hasn't done that yet. Which is not great for him. Because that's going to put him behind, and we I don't know when he's going to do that check. He might not do that check until he ends up getting to D4 access, because that check is near D4. But we'll see. Now, looks like Mashi's going to be heading to D uh, seven as well. So we have we have at this point a lot of the there there is overlap here. Heret going into the secret shop and finding a season. So Heret's I'm going to assume that he found the uh, secret shop members card. That's what it's called. The members card in the dungeon 2 since he's the only one that did dungeon 2 and he did find two items there which is one of them has the potential for use one of them is definitely required because it's a season um so it looks like he has summer which is going to give him access to d3 okay huh so here we're seeing just the, the difference in in routes sort of still pay off Nothing that Jangler, Mashi, or Dragon are doing right now is bad or wrong. It's all good. It's all good routing, but Heret's route just happening to pay off more so here. As Heret's going to prioritize D5 over D3, which is an interesting choice. I wonder why. I wonder why. I don't know. He has D5 access, he has D3 access. I, I, I understand, there's nothing wrong with the decision. I know that I personally have a bias towards trying to hit more recently available dungeons than old dungeons. Um, just because of how the sphere system sort of works. There's a lot of... Hey, hold on, distraction. Dragon CO here. Dragon CO just got an item called the Fool's Ore. And the Fool's Ore is a chunk of green rock. And you can swing that green rock, and that green rock will kill things. Do you know how much, let's say, hypothetically, chat, chat. If you already know, don't answer. If, 
let's say that the level one sword does two damage. The level two sword does three damage base. Based on that, how much damage would you think the full sword does? Just if you were to take a guess, just any guess, any number, throw it out there. 6.5. A good guess. That's a good guess. Um, the answer is that it does 20 damage. What? Um, so it's an item that is <laughs> in vanilla. It is, it is a vanilla item that in vanilla only, only appears in one section of the game called hide and seek. So in, and none of these players are going to have to do it because they're able to skip the trigger with the rock's cape. And we've seen them jump over the trigger a couple of times here. There's a part of the game called hide and seek where two subrosians will knock the feather out of you and steal it and you have to play hide and seek with them. And as a gift, as a reward, their payment for taking your feather is giving you a green rock. And once you get your feather back in the vanilla game, your green rock goes away because you get your feather back. That green rock in the vanilla game has that same base power. So if you're ever doing hide and seek in vanilla, um, vanilla seasons, and you use your shovel to dig up a fire potaboo tower, one of the fire snakes, and you use that fool's ore, that fool's ore will destroy it. So that's not a difference in coding. Jangler didn't mess with it. It was just added to the item pool. So it is a very, very, very good weapon. Um, it's stronger than the master sword. And I think it's like the equivalent power of the, a spin slash from the big Goron sword or something. I don't know the, I don't remember the exact, but um, it two shots the first boss. It, <laughs> here, here, watch dragon, watch the boss fight. Watch the boss fight with uh, this. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's three hits on each head, three hits on the body. With the level two sword, that takes, I think it's seven spin slashes per head. And then it's like one, two, three, four. It's somewhere around 10 slashes for the body. So just to give an idea of like how silly, like getting an early Fool's Orb, if you can get the Fool's Orb early, you're, you're, you're pretty happy. You're pretty pleased with your situation because you're going to be uh, killing things. The only like downside, and I mean, it can't cut grass. It doesn't break pots, so it doesn't have the level two or the the, the sword stuff there. It's just purely a damaging item. Wait, but it is. It's a twenty damage weapon that can't even break a freaking <laughs> pot. Oh, it's 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 uh, grass has that high high defense. Can't get broken. There's no uh, no crushing going on. No grass, no pots. They can stand strong, but. <laughs> I hit you in the head, you're going down. That's how it works. It's uh yeah, so that's that's it's a it's a it's a fun item. It's it's one of those items that, you know, when you don't get it, it's a little bit sad. And but because they have it, when we get to the final the end, the final boss, uh it it, it makes short work of our, our final boss in an amusing way. Dragon now has made his way over to D2. Heret here is going to finish up D5 in a little bit. He's headed towards the boss, Dig Dogger. Um, Mashi in D2. Jangler finishing up D7. He just picked up the Fool's Ore, so he's, he's in a good way. So right now, if I had to place... It's a little hard to say. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Uh... So obviously Jangler and Mashi are following a similar route to Dragon right now. So there's definitely Dragon would be ahead of them. As far as Heret versus Dragon at this point, it's hard to say who's ahead. Probably Dragon because D7 is a longer dungeon than D5. Um, but it, we won't really know for sure until we get closer to the end here. And Dragon's not out of D2 yet, technically. So Heret and Dragon are probably pretty neck and neck right now. So it'll depend on these next couple of checks. Um, yeah. So while we, so while they're, they're dungeon diving right now, so just to give a recap of what people are looking for, uh, the biggest items that the runners need overall are to finish out their seasons. So we see that Dragon has 
Dragon has um, winter and fall. Haret has summer and fall. And then, th so we have we know where three of our seasons are in the world that we know that they exist. So we need to find that fourth season, and we need to find the key to enter dungeon four. Two, one more of our gem. You can see that Hereditament has three of the six or four required gems, and we need to get to level two boomerang. And we see that Heret has one. Heret has a pretty high item lead, assuming that Dragon's keeping up to date with his tracker, which is not a guarantee knowing Dragon. Um, what we are seeing is, in, it's just sort of the long term, we see that Jangler got pretty punished due to that early going out of logic not really paying off in any way. So he's, he's finding himself behind because of that, uh, mostly. Brett really putting off D7, which is a good... I mean, I believe outside of the Fool's Lore... Outside of the Fool's Lore... There's nothing in D7, so... Perret's decision to not go there is not punishing really in any way. His fights are going to be a little bit slower. His D3 is going to be a little bit slower than Dragon. So we're going to see basically whether or not Dragon having the Fool's Lore and having that extra damage is going to be like a significant enough uh, overall time game to keep up with just the item density that Heret's rocking right now. Dragon gained terrible luck with his bomb drops there. But yeah. The worst... The worst scenario, in all honesty, for... Uh, a Season Seed is not getting your Seed Satchel... Until... Uh, late in the game. Because you don't get to go fast and you don't get to teleport. And not being able to do those two things makes it unbearable like there, there's a there's a certain sense of like feeling bad because you can't go fast um and you can technically complete in hard logic it can be in logic for you to complete the game without ever getting uh the seed satchel there's no requirement in hard logic because you can make all the jumps with rocks cape even if you don't have the seed satchel so there was a hard seed that Jangler and I were doing yesterday where we didn't our seed satchel was like the last item we got and it was it was just a huge pain. So we see Mashi in D5, Dragon prioritizing overworld checks, which is interesting. I know that Dragon Dragon reads pretty hard into chain quests. Sort of any item that gives you access to one or a few checks. So this master never that he got. He's a single check, so he just does that. We're um, roboting pretty hard right now. Oh. Hello? I hope it's not... Not Discord in general. Uh... Huh? Let me... Let me join. Yeah, I guess. Let's see if this change anything for the better. Am I still a robot? Oh, better. I'm better. What's what's going on here? That's right. fine now. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. There's, yeah, basically not having your speed seeds, not being able to go fast sucks, not being able to teleport sucks. Where, what's the route? So dragon placing value on D3 over D5, even though he can complete D5. Not sure whether or not 
he is doing this intentionally or has forgotten that he can get into d5 with dragon i never know um i never know whether or not dragon's serious when he says that he didn't realize that he could do something but at the same time i don't not believe him um but based on how this seed is going and the route or based on how the items have laid out, I would not expect... For one, I would not be surprised if Heret and Dragon sub to this. Um, and I would be surprised if anyone was over 220 in this seed. Or as far as the people being restreamed goes. Just because we have gotten a lot of items. I know that... Jangler's suffering pretty heavily from not having the satchel, so depending on how long it takes for him to find that satchel, he could be punished pretty heavily in the long term. Um, there are two satchels in the game, and they're, you know, they're, quote, progressive. So he could find the second one. If he's able to find that second one and, and cover up the mistake of not getting the first, then he could be fine. But I don't believe any of the runners have found the second one yet. And the longer that they go without finding the second one, because there's no real, there's no real logical need for it to be anywhere important, uh, the more punishing it's going to be for for him in the long run. But yeah, this is not shaping up to be too gnarly of a seed. There's nothing, there's nothing excessively uh, out of the way or terrible that's happening. What is likely going to happen, and what we see in a lot of seeds, is my prediction right now is that our level 2 boomerang, the magic boomerang, is probably going to be our go item. Because the... So unless you get level 2 boomerang early, the level 2 boomerang doesn't unlock anything. All it does is allow you to... Or, sorry, let me rephrase. It doesn't lock anything in the overworld or any other dungeons. All it's going to do is allow you to beat Dungeon 6, which is the dungeon that you would normally get the uh, Magic Boomerang in. So because of that, you can do everything in the game except for one check and one boss fight without level 2 Boomerang. And so you might be able to understand how that could result, that often results in Boomerang being anywhere kind of randomly and that's that tends to be a pretty common go item um and we didn't we didn't see it we don't see it in this seed but there is the potential too for what for uh, our rings to be in logic another feature of the season the oracles games is the ring box and the rings Mothula goes down. Oh, there's the second seed satchel. Okay. So Jangler's fine. So Mothula had the second seed satchel. So Jangler will find that if he goes to D3 pretty soon here. Which means that his punishment will not last for too much longer. He he is losing a lot of time. Just based on that. But uh he's at least not gonna be terribly destroyed for the long term because that could be pretty uh pretty crushing so we have heret who's going to be heading towards d7 right now i'm just going to take that guess mashi's clearing through d5 dragon's finishing d3 and then jangler's finishing d2 based on who finishes d7 if, if heret finishes d7 first then he's probably ahead if dragon finishes d5 first then he's ahead so that's what we're looking at as far as like relative placements and then um mashi's looking to be in third with jangler coming behind because of that early that early out of logic play that sort of has ruined him for the long term um yeah, so there are a couple of... I mean, if you've played the Oracle games recently or are just familiar with them at all, you would the, a lot of the quality of life stuff that has been changed, pretty common for randomizer stuff like the... the uh, a lot of the cutscenes have been taken out. The pirate captain, when you talk to him in vanilla and give him his bell back, there's a 1 minute and 50 second cutscene 
that is in vanilla that we have to deal with in the speed run, but Jangler just took that out, so we go straight to the uh, straight to the end of the boat ride to skip a, that out. So it's a lot of cutscene skipping. A two minute yep. cutscene in a two D Zelda. <laughs> it is it is a two minute cutscene in a two D Zelda. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a thing. I don't even remember that cut. Oh wait! Yeah. Oh. It's the dancing pirates yeah. in the boat, because they get seasick, you have to- there's text mashing, so you can't even- it's not even a bathroom break in the speedrun, because you still have to mash through the text. It's a- uh, it's everyone's- everyone likes the music, viewer- when you watch it, you, people like the music, but then uh, as a runner it is- is not- <laughs> not ideal. Um, so that- that was taken out, much to the uh, disappointment of those that like the pirate music. And then, uh, so there's cutscene taking out, and then there's the other big one is a change to how the ring box works. So in vanilla, when you get your rings from a chest, it's unidentified, and you have to go to the ring shop and talk to Vasu to identify them, and give, the, and then you can start to equip them and all this stuff. And it's a whole thing. Um, just to add some more potential for variety and just more enjoyment, Jangler made it so that you start out with you start out with the level three ring box, which means that you can equip five ring. You can have five rings on your equip bar, and the rings come pre-identified when you pick them up, so you, you can read the name of them as you pick them up, and you can equip them from your start menu. You don't need to go to the shop. So that that one it just allows for a little bit more. There's just more potential for variation there. Two, it allows us to put rings in logic in a way that's not terrible. So we can add... So there's there's two rings. There's like the, the fist ring and the expert's ring, which allow Link to punch when he doesn't have a sword equipped um, to do damage. And with the expert's ring, you can like break pots and break things. So that could potentially be in logic for you to get a ring that you have to equip. Um, and you can like punch seeds off of trees with it to collect seeds. So you could go a pretty long ways without gaining a sword if you get an early expert's ring. Um, so that, that's sort of a quality of life change that allows for easy ring swapping and more potential logic variation, which is which is good. Um, I'm trying to think of other quality of life stuff. Most of it was just removal of silly text boxes, like the text box when you hop on one of the animals that tells you, hey, I can jump, just so you know. Uh, all that stuff was taken out because, you know, we assume that you know the kangaroo can jump, which might be a bold assumption, but I believe in you, chat. I believe in you and your abilities. <clears throat> Oh yeah, the quality of life is that the three animal companions, you don't go, I mean, when you get the flute, it's a randomized flute that comes pre-identified. So you get either Ricky, Mushes, or Dimitri's flute. You don't get a identified flute and have to get through the process of all that stuff. That's, that's how it works. But the game is set up to still allow you to complete it, even if you get, one, you don't need it. Most seeds, you don't need the animal at all, but, yeah, the, the way that it's set up with the animals is fixed so that you don't have to worry about locking yourself or anything like that. Am I roboting again? Yeah, cool. a little. Let me check if it's actually on me. Oh. Great, now I killed the commentary page, because uh, the commentary, because I can't join. There we go, now I could join again. Am I, am I a robot? Yeah, you are a robot, but that's not on you, that's actually on Discord. Oh. Uh, that's cool. That's on Discord. <coughs> Let's hope it gets better. Hello, hello, Discord! Yeah, Discord. there we go. Alright, well, hold on. Alright, hopefully. Hopefully Discord will bear with us for um, the time being. Safe state, I was thinking about doing that, but we have another restream going with three people. Um, and this might actually break the commentary uh, 
voice connection for a few seconds, so I kind of don't want to do it until, unless absolutely necessary. We can, we can push through. Don't. I'm. I promise, chat. I'm not a robot. <clears throat> don't. Don't read into it. Don't think about it. It's fine. Everything's fine. So, I'm thinking right now that <laughs> that jangler or uh, not jangler dragon is. Oh wait, hold on. Jangler's in D8. No, jangler. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um. So Jangler has Jangler. Jangler. Okay. Um So Jangler doesn't have the seed satchel. Jangler doesn't have the seed satchel. Which is gonna make D8 a pain. Again, it's not required to technically and he has the hyper slingshot. So he's he can beat D8 one in normal logic, it's not in logic to beat D8 without Pegasus Seeds. Um, so he's he's doing this out of logic, which is an interesting decision. And he has access to D3. Like, this is, so this is on my end. So this is, I understand not going, because right now the D1 key we know is in Goron Mountain. And that's an overworld check, and it's pretty out of the way. So I understand not going to check that on a whim. He might have forgotten about it. He might have just not prioritized it. That's not a huge... I get that. But he has the D3 key, and he has Summer. Which means that D3 is fully completable for him. So he's 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 either overlooking the fact that he has both of those items. Which is likely. Um, so even though he can beat this dungeon, it's it's just a really interesting play. And by interesting, I mean he's going to get punished, and we know where both the Seed Satchels are, so we know that he's not going to get Seed Satchel here. Um, so it's, it's unfortunate for Jangler that we already know that this is not good for him to do, and it sucks because it looks like he's just, he's blanking on, uh, blanking on the fact that he could have done to D3. Or he's making big brain plays. He might feel like he's behind because he made the, uh, he made the Allogic play earlier, and it didn't pay off, so he's concerned that he's behind, so he's making the big brain play, but it's not gonna pay off at all. Um, which sucks. <laughs> so, in this case, the big brain play would be hoping that, like, <sighs> I actually don't know what he's hoping to find here. He might be hoping to find the D1 key, or the D4 key, or the D6 gem here. Or he's hoping to find the second seed satchel out of logic. There's the D4 key. Alright, so... Okay. Huh. Um... Huh. Well... Chat... <laughs> he has the D4 key now. So Jangler's on his own path, his own route. That is that is paying off. Uh, D8 is the longest dungeon, and has the most. It's it's the and he has spring. He has all four seasons. I'm uh, never mind. He's a genius. Uh, Jangler's a genius. I don't know. I don't know, never mind, ignore everything that I was saying. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never played this game before. It was clearly never punished. What am I saying? What's the point? Um, so, Jangler made what is, from a, a the standpoint of just anyone looking at, at the seed and the items available, he made the wrong play, uh, but you know, it's the, the IQ is too much. It's too much, I just didn't think about it. I didn't realize that this was Jangler we're talking about, so it doesn't matter. I mean, he coded oh. the rando, he knows his stuff. He knows, he knows. He's, and he's He has that secret dev knowledge that I just, I'm not up to date on. All right, so, um, 
Okay, so so Jangler, we now know where the D4 key is and where our last season is. So Jangler has that going for him. Um, what we don't know is where one of the gems is and the second boomerang. Those are our two items that we need to get to the end here. Spread out between the runners, obviously. Dragon is still is heading towards D8 now. Um, so Dragon's heading to D8. Which makes sense on his end because he's he's clearly in the lead right now, as Heret's just now getting out of D seven. Um, so what we're gonna see is that at this point Heret's gonna trail behind Dragon in a certain way. He's or Heret, yeah, Heret's gonna be trailing behind Dragon, doing some of the same checks and probably going to D eight as well. That'd be my guess. Um, So, yeah, um, so we have Dragon in first, Heret in second, and Jangler in, Jang I don't, I have no idea what Jangler situation is at this point in time. Um, so this is very, very interesting. Uh, okay. So we're looking for our last gem and our... Level 2 Boomerang. Those are the two items we need to get into go mode across the board. And, we're, and Dragon and Heret are going to find two of those, one their Season and their D4 key here, relatively shortly. Assuming that Heret goes. Heret prioritizing overworld checks over D8 is risky, and the more the time he spends doing... The more time he spends doing... Overworld checks, the more punished he's going to get and the more Dragon's going to pull out his lead. Um, I'm not sure what... So, Heret's going for Great Moblin here. It's a single check and it's a pretty long check because there's a variation of RNG on the fight which can make it go for a bit longer. I'm not sure... I mean, if it pays off, then it was the right play. That's how Randall works. Everyone knows. Even if it's the wrong decision, if you get rewarded, it was the right decision the whole time. See Jangler five minutes ago. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. If this is either the square gem or the level 2 boomerang, that's pretty sick. On on Heret's part. Dragon here, we're going to see do... Uh, if I know Dragon at all, he's going to do HSS skip. Uh, maybe he won't. If he, if he, we'll see. I'm assuming he's gonna do it. HSS skip is a, uh, it's it's the only truly difficult thing to do in the speed run because it's a it's a double frame perfect uh, bomb boosted cape jump. The game runs at 60 FPS, so you can put together why that is a little difficult, particularly because Seasons doesn't have the benefit of you know, good buffering, like a Link's Awakening or a, a Ocarina of Time situation. So there's there's not the same uh, ease there with the buffering. So we're going to see Dragon, he fell into that hole to set up his sub-pixel. A sub-pixel is like half of a pixel. If there's a graph with 1, 2, 3, 4, sub-pixel is like 1.5, 2.5, 3.5. So he has to set that up properly so that he can try to buffer out this bomb jump correctly. We might see him give up if he fails a couple of times. I know that Dragon, he's not... If, if he's feeling like he can't do it, he'll just give up on it before he sinks too much time on it. There we go, he got the first jump. And... That's the second jump. Alright, easy. Easy game, easy life. So, he's just gonna rip apart D8 now. It, it skips, uh, so in the vanilla speedrun, it skips five minutes off of how you would do the dungeon normally. In rando, it's going to save a little bit less time because you have to do checks for, you know, because it's randomized. Um, so it's going to save not as much time technically, but it's going to make him be able to skip a key grab. That's pretty sick, Dragon. He's going to be able to skip a key, um chest which normally eats up a pretty significant amount of time 
and he gets to avoid the most annoying part of D8, which is the underground 2D side scroller ice section and the ice puzzle that are connected to it. So skipping those things, even though this time minutes time save is probably closer to like two and a half minutes versus a normal five minute save on a regular run, it's just a quality of life save more than anything. Um, so it's it's just super super good, and it's cool. It's cool to watch someone do a double frame perfect bomb jump with a cape. That's why cape is cool. Cape is awesome. Magic here in D7. Jake was going to finish up D8. Discord! God damn it! Whoa. No. I'll be right back. But she executes very nicely there. Guys, um, please don't worry, you'll probably lose voice connection for a second. We gotta quickly switch the Discord channel server because we are having okay. big troubles. Alright, let's change the server and let's hope nothing breaks. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. And you are fine now. All right. Are you still fine? Yep, still here. I'm still Great. here. Great. All right. Everything is fine now. Yay. Everything's okay. Am I good? Yes, I'm you a, are. I'm not a robot. You, I Western, promise. Western European Discord server better than East Coast server. <laughs> confirmed. There we go. All right. Always fine. Uh, all right, so it, uh, what have we seen here? What have we seen here? Again. So the downside, the only downside here is that because Dragon goes the other way, because Dragon did HSS skip, he's not he he hasn't picked up his season or his D4 key. Yet, so he doesn't know how much value there is in D8. <laughs> uh, Jangler's gonna clean up on uh, Medusa's head here, which only takes four hits with the Fool's Or, which is ridiculous. Takes a whole lot of, whole lot of spin slashes normally, but Fool's Or is cool. Other things about the uh, Seasons Rando as they exist now, just in general are the fact that um, map and compass are in the game and they're just within the dungeons. So if you know how to do your dungeon math, you can do chest skipping if, you, if you're just paying attention and keeping track, which is can be difficult, or, you know, it's as difficult as any other uh, rando that has that. Uh, small keys within their own chests are not randomized as of yet. I know that in the future, Jangler has wanted wants to do that where not key sanity, but randomized within the dungeon. Um, but that is going to require logic changes. Um, compass and map are randomized, but randomized within the dungeons. They're not randomized out of dungeon. So as, if the, the map and compass are in every dungeon, but they're randomized. So as long as you, if you are keeping track of your tests, you can you can skip chests based on your previous previous checks. Just counting. If you know you have two checks left and you know that you don't have map and compass yet, you can probably skip those checks. Uh, Jangler has so few hearts right now, chat. I don't know if you're if you're seeing how many hearts he has, but it's not a lot. And he did D8. He did D8 with five hearts. Jangler, 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 Jangler. Map and compass are randomized with items. Small keys are not randomized. Boss keys are randomized, and every other non-key chest are randomized within each other. Well, boss keys are randomized. Boss key, map, and compass are all randomized within the dungeon. Items, anything that's not one of those three, are randomized within the world. Small key chests are vanilla for the time being, until Jangler is ready to uh, go through the process of rewriting the logic to account for the keys being randomized within the dungeon. But well, I don't know what the ETA on that is currently. I know he's focusing on other things first. Um, so yeah, so we see Heret in D5 now. 
which he's already beaten, which means that he's now doing sort of a scrounge for checks. Oh, right. I forgot. <clears throat> so, Herdemen, this is where you, like, because I know the runners pretty well and we race all the time, I know Heret hates D8, which is why he's not there right now. He would much rather do a single check in a dungeon he's already completed than go to D8, even though he has everything he needs to beat D8 because he hates D8 that much, which normally isn't a huge deal. But in this case, the D4 key and Spring are both there, so he's getting punished pretty hard because he's not going to D8 right now. And because Dragon has no qualms with just going into D8, he's really pulling ahead of Heret in that regard. Jangler finding his boomerang. So we know... So yeah, so again, the only items we're still missing out on as far as what we need to overall as a group to look for for go mode is square jewel and um level two boomerang so as soon as we see either of those pop up i'm gonna assume i'm guessing that what am i gonna guess i'm gonna guess that square jewel is inside d4 that's my guess and that magic boomerang will be either on the way to D6 or in D6. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but that's that's my assumption as we go. It's really hard to predict where the magic boomerang is going to be because it can be in any location. It can be in any spot because it doesn't have a sort of sphere effect in the same way that a lot of the other items do. That, that all the other progression items do, because it only has the purpose of beating D6. And if D6 is your last dungeon anyways, then it doesn't really matter where the boomerang was the whole time. Dragon taking care of Frypolar. Now gonna make his way to just go clean up on Medusa Head. He, he found the D4 key and Spring, so he has all of his seasons now. Stops to pick up a fairy because he doesn't want to die just good Heret what's what's Heret doing oh, okay Magic Boomerang could be here where Heret's going right now this check is pretty out of the way as well Heret is really hoping to find <sighs> the problem is that he's really hoping to find his season actually what he's probably hoping to find is the D4 key we know the D4 key's not there uh, so this is, even if he finds the D6 gem or the magic boomerang here, he's, it's it's not as much of an advantage to him that he might think it is based on what we know, but we'll, we'll see whether or not this, this pays. Okay, so there's, there's magic boomerang. So that's cool. So he, boomerang's not going to be his go item. And if he decides to go to D8 right now, things will be... Fine. Where is he gonna go? This this is the this is the question here. Where is our young Heret gonna go? He's heading back to Sabrosia. To go to What is Boomerang along? I'm actually curious to see where he's trying to go. <sighs> oh. Okay, so meanwhile, while that's happening, Dragon's going to D4, obviously, because he has the D4 key. That's just the best play. He's not going to find Boomerang there, but he could find Square Jewel. Finding Square Jewel is going to suck for him. Because, so the reason that finding Square Jewel sucks for Dragon is that finding Square Jewel in D4 means that he's probably going to just go to D6 after going to D4 and hope that he finds Boomerang there. That is not going to pay off because we know where Boomerang is. So it'll be interesting to see where he decides to go after he cleans up Cuckoo Mountain and goes to 
uh, d4. Jangler clean up on d5. Mashy. So here's... <laughs> Jangler's a wild card right now. Jangler's, I mean, Jangler's behind, uh, behind Dragon and Heret. I'm not sure if he's behind Mashy at this point. Like, I, I honestly don't know where he is because of how different his route has been. I'm interested to see how it's going to play out and how it's going to pay off in the end because I'm, I'm just... <laughs> it boggles my little mind. He still hasn't gone to D3. Chat, I want you to know that Jangler hasn't gone to D3 still. This is so fascinating to me. Perret doing more overworld checks instead of going to D4. Go not going or er, going to D8 rather. Not going to D8 yet is such an interesting play. It, it it's really punishing for him too, for Heret in this scenario. The upside is that he is clearing out all of his overworld checks, so he's not gonna have to do stuff after D8. Which is could again, it's one of those things where it depends on what dragon decides to check and where he decides to go after d4. If he finds Square Jewel, I would not be surprised to see him just shoot straight for d6 and hope to pick up that last essence and be done. Or hope to pick up Magic Boomerang on the way to d6 and be done. And when he realizes that it's not there, he's going to have to do overworld checks. And since Dragon likes to leave overworld checks undone, unfinished, uh where he decides to route or how he decides to route his overworld is going to have a pretty big impact on how much time loss he gets and how much time Heret saves because he's about to find D4 key and spring. So square at this point, if you're Heret, you want Square Jewel to be in D4. Like as far as he doesn't know this, but Heret wants Square Jewel to be in D4 because he's in go mode after D4. Dragon Kind of, Dragon needs to check the overworld in a particular way. It'll be interesting to see. I'm very interested to see. But right now, Dragon's still in the lead, and we'll see how long he's able to keep that lead going forward after D4. Mashy here cleaning up uh, on D7 with Bullzor, so it's no big deal. Jangler has four essences at this point, and he looks to be heading towards... Where's he going? I'm not 100% sure where he's going at the moment. So, what do you think for you? How long will it take Dragon, who's, I guess, finishing first, to finish this? So, it really depends on where Square Jewel is. <laughs> So, if I had to guess, yeah, I would say, I mean, he's definitely going to sub two. Oh, he's definitely going to sub two. I would be, uh, I'd be pretty shocked if he didn't sub two. So let's actually spice this up. People in chat, let me know, or let us know, where's the square jewel? Use exclamation mark bed plus your location to say where it is. What's your bed? For who, where is it? It could be, so our options right now, it could still be in D4. A dragon could find it here shortly. It could be inside D6. It could be in the Lost Woods on the way to D6. Or it could be in an overworld check that no one has done yet. Although, I think Kret's done the overworld, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure on what the odds of that happening are. Oh no, it can't be, sorry, the Scrudge can't be in D6 because it's, sorry. I was thinking Magic Boomerang. The Square Jewel is either in D4 or in an overworld check that everyone's missed. It can't be in the Lost Woods. I lied to you, Trez. I'm sorry. I'm a filthy liar. Dang. I've wasted your bet entirely. I'm a monster. No, Square Jewel can't be in D6. I'm sorry. Chat. I, I, I'm, I'm a monster. I lied to you all. I will find you. Ooh. Black Beast. You know what? That's a good bet. I, I it could be Black Beast. So here's okay. 
All right, let me explain to you why Black Beast is a sick bet. Uh, the, the, there are five C types in the game. There's Ember, Mystery, uh, Scent, Pegasus, and Gale. There are six C trees in the game. So you're guaranteed to get one of each C tree. So of the six, there's going to be one different one and then one repeat. <coughs> One of the one of the seeds, one of the seed trees is locked behind the entrance to D6. In this seed, the mystery seeds tree was locked behind D6. But you can get mystery seeds. The only other way you can get mystery seeds is from the D8 mini boss. So because our runners have gone to D8, but Alba Mashi so far, because they've gone to D8 and they've fought Fripolar, the D8 mini boss, they all have mystery seeds. Mystery seeds are only useful for the fry polar fight and one check. Black Beast. It's a little lonely island out by D7 on the beach. So, and it's completely in logic to get your mystery seeds from fry polar. That's not out of logic or anything. Oh no, never mind. Dragon found the square jewel. <laughs> I take it all back. It's not worth it. It was it was there was potential there for that to be sick, but instead we have our fourth jewel. Which means that Heret's gonna be in go mode as soon as he finishes D4. Wait, where was it? And it's, it was in D4. It was the vanilla boss key check in D4. It happened quick. <coughs> I bought one. GG. You get bragging rights. Good bet. Good bet, I bought. Clap. So the. I do like I did like the Black Beast call though, because I wasn't thinking about it. And that was that was a good call. And I've had it be there before. So what we're at where we're at now. No, Dragon doesn't have the X gem. Where's the X gem chat? I don't remember. Oh, you know where the X gem is? That's actually funny. The X gem is in the town. In the town, the main town, there is a uh, a chest behind some mushrooms. The mushrooms can only be lifted up in fall. That's where the X gem is. So Dragon needs the X gem and the that's pretty funny, Dragon. And the, uh... The... Level 2 Boomerang. The Level 2 Boomerang, we know, is fall locked behind a mushroom cave inside... Or right above D1. And the X gem is fall locked in town. So both of Dragon's needs are fall locked. He has fall, so he can do it. It's just a matter of how soon he does those checks. So... Dragon's overworld routing is going to determine how much time he loses or saves here. But he's pretty... He's got a pretty generous lead right now. Because... He's about to finish D4. And... Perret needs still needs to finish D8 and then do D4 before he gets into go mode. So as long as he finds Square Jewel... Or, sorry, as long as he finds X Gem and Level 2 Boomerang before Perret finishes D4, Dragon has a pretty easy win. If he just makes bad overworld decisions, he's going to be in trouble, and Heret could potentially snake it out. But I would be surprised, just given the, the amount of uh, buffer Dragon has built for himself. So this is your... For Dragon... For Dragon, this is very much the Zooter, you need one or two items to get to go mode, but you've given yourself so much time to do as many checks as possible in the overworld randomly to find what you need to find. So hopefully he just makes the best use of that and gets it in and out and is, is good to go here. Um, and then we'll see... But we'll see. We'll see where he, he goes. He's going to pick up these seeds first. He might head to desert. Potentially? I'm trying to think. Or is this the Barosha? Oh, okay. So he's going to do the spring check. There's one check you can do here in Eastern Suburbs when it's spring. Because you need a, to jump up with a flower. A, a blast bloom. So he's going to do that check and he's going to head to desert. He's not going to find anything there, but... That's his pathing. After he does desert, if he's just wrapping around the world, I would assume that he'd go back to town after desert, because that's just circularly. 
circularly. That just makes sense, but I don't know what his route's gonna be here. Um, the, no, so in Seasons, the trade quest doesn't give you an item. In Seasons, the trade quest only gives you the code to get to the, the level two sword. Uh, so there's no actual item there and the code itself isn't randomized. And I know that Jangler doesn't have the interest of randomizing the sequence to get to the level two sword and make the trade quest required. I know in Ages the uh, in Ages the trade quest does give an item. It gives the broken sword. So, but for the Ages rando, the trade quest is removed and just replaced with the fixed sword. Um, the trade quest is removed. The maple, which maple doesn't drop. Uh, maple does not drop anything as of right now. Although it has been floated. The ideas of adding in the making it so maple has a chance of dropping a heart piece and there is a gasha you can plant gasha seeds to make gasha trees and the gasha trees the gasha seeds that uh can drop a heart piece as well so there is talks about maybe making it so that it's guaranteed first try for both of those and then adding them to the pool but that's not currently a thing and it might not it, it's hard to say if it will actually end up coming to fruition so dragon's desert heist doesn't pay off yeah that's i mean that's definitely why that the ran the rng aspects of both maple and the gasha nut are why it's not a thing in the rando as it exists currently, so it might be simplified and added in later. Hey, look, Dragon's about to get the, uh, Dragon's about to get the Magic Boomerang. Which is, it's, it's better for Dragon that he's finding the Magic Boomerang before the X-Gem, because he's not opening up any checks at all with the Magic Boomerang. Which is, you know, I mean, it, depending on how familiar you are with randos, that might seem weird to not want to open up checks, but... In this case, when one check is an item and one check is... I mean, you have two checks left and one of them gives you an item and one of them gives you access to a new area. The last thing you want is to open up more checks instead of just finding your item. The sooner you can find your item and reduce the number of checks you need overall, the better off you're going to be. So Dragon's, Dragon's pleased with this outcome because it means that he's not going to have to go into d6 and hope to find the boomerang later now it's just a matter of him finding the x gem and it's really funny to me that the x gem is in the starting area because he's about to go do moblin king he's doing the great moblin before going to town and doing a simple check and i'm intrigued by this decision very intrigued he's not gonna find anything here but i find it amusing Um, Perret is going to finish up D8 here pretty shortly. He has a couple more ice blocks that he needs to throw to get to Medusa. Jangler just finished D4, so we know that Jangler has the square gem. Ah, he didn't actually do it. So he's going to get the square gem here in a moment. He was playing... Jangler was playing a risky game of... Because of being able to do dungeon math, he was running the, the gambit of either doing a check or doing the boss and hoping the boss check is the one you need. So he went to go fight Goma. Goma dropped either the map or the compass, so he has to go back. He's going to have to go back and uh, do those checks. Hello. Those of you coming from Link to the Path. We are here coming towards the second or three quarters of the way through for most of our people here on the season's run as dragon is searching for his go mode and her follows closely behind Gun. so now we know jangler has all four of his gems he still doesn't have the d1 key he's about to find the d1 key this is so interesting so everyone else did d1 at about the 15 minute mark Jangler's going to be doing D1 right now. Uh, 
after he picks up this key, almost certainly. And he's gonna know that this was available pretty early on. Jangler doesn't. Jangler hasn't done D three. Okay, so Jangler still doesn't have his seed satchel. Remember when I said at the start that Jangler wasn't gonna be punished because the second, the second seed satchel was in D three. So if he just went to D three, he could get his second seed satchel. He's actually gonna go. I'm assuming this is my guess. He's gonna go to D one first and get the first seed satchel from D one from the key that he just picked up. So he's gonna end up getting the same first seed satchel that everyone else got, but he's gonna get it super late. And then he'll go to D3 and see that Makula has the, the other D3 one. There is an Aegis rando, it is combined. No, it's not, it's the program, the randomizer is one, it's one program that randomizes both seeds, or both, you can randomize either game. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's the same rules of randomization as for seasons. Other than the fact that Aegis doesn't have seasons in the game, so the seasons aren't randomized. So Mashley's gonna pick up his D4 key here, just to get a couple more items. He's also gonna pick up the spring rod. I know, if you're Jangler, depending on how aware Jangler is of what's been happening here, like, if, he, if he's cognizant of the fact that he could have gotten that check an hour and a half ago, he's gonna be pretty upset. <laughs> if he if he's like not if he doesn't realize that, then you know he might not be too upset. He might just think that's the way it is. But I know that Jing is probably probably not uh, too pleased right now. Uh, Dragon's doing every difficult check before he goes to the town. So this is what I'm talking about right now. So Heret needs to do D4, and then as soon as Heret does D4, he's in go mode. So, I mean, <laughs> it depends on how, how long is it going to take for a dragon to just go to town and check the starting area. That's like, that's actually what it is. Because Heret's going to be able to get through this pretty quickly here. And he's going to just shoot straight for d6 as soon as he finds as soon as he, he gets that square jewel and gets out of d4. Suddenly he might not sub to Dragon, depending on how long it takes. So you lied is, to me again? I don't think I lied to you. I don't think I lied to you. I didn't, I, you know, <laughs> it depends. I didn't think, so if you're doing checks, chat, as in a randomizer, this is true of any randomizer, not this randomizer in particular, but if you're doing checks and you have a check that's going to take you five seconds to do, and you have a check that's going to take you two minutes to do, and you need one item, I would assume that all of you chat, all of which one would you do, chat? Would you do the two minute check or the five second check for one item that you need? Please. I, I do me. the two minute check because so uh, that way I get to enjoy more of the game. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm. I, this is my mistake. I apologize. I did not take into account the <laughs> level, the levels of fun. The le oh, you're right. I I shouldn't have asked chat. That was a bad bad question. So, uh, yeah. There's there's a uh, unless I'm misremembering. No, I'm pretty sure that the X gem is there. If the X gem is somewhere else, then maybe I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure it's it's there. Oh, man. So, the, the, so in my mind, I thought Dragon was going to go. I thought Dragon was going to find the Square Jewel because the Square Jewel was right next to a warp point, and he it's just easy to, to get to. He's heading maybe towards town. Let's find out. Let's see. Let's see if he's he's going to the old man. Come on. I'm I'm, just, I'm super fascinated right now by by Dragon Stream. Okay. Okay. So he's he's here. He's going to He's going to Black Beast. Okay. You know what's crazy is that Dragon Dragon has forgotten that he hasn't done that check in the town yet. That's what's actually happening here. He, he, he doesn't remember that he hasn't done this check. And if he doesn't think that he's done this check, he's 
He only has one seed left. Okay, there you go. Um, if he thinks that he's gotten that check, he might not ever find it. Unless he really reconsiders and just double double dips on things. I mean, it would be kind of funny after everybody said, yeah, it's quite obvious that Dragon was just sitting <laughs> half an hour before us. <laughs> oh man, what a cruel twist of fate. So he's gonna do... Is he going back into D2? Did he skip a check in D2? No, nope. he's... he's... He's not sure. He's actually not sure. And you can see based on that, he was checking the the map. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is the search and this is how Heret can take this. This is Dragon Seed to lose and he's doing all he can to lose it right now. He is hovering over trees. He's looking at map tiles. He's trying to figure out what he has and hasn't done yet because he's he's just not Sure, at this point. And because the problem is that Dragon spends so much time doing save scums, he does a lot of save scumming and he'll do like four or five checks and then do a reset to erase all of those. And it's fine once you hit go mode, but when you're getting to one item left, you start to second guess what checks you have and haven't done. He's going back to the main town. So maybe... Okay. No, I think he's I think he's doing it. I think we're good. I think he's remembered. Here we go. Okay. No, no, no. We're good, everyone. He's figured it out. He's come to He remembered. We did it. We did it, chat. There we go. Dragon is hit go mode. Um he's probably not going to sub 2 anymore. But he's going to get a good time nonetheless. And he's he's pretty much sealed the victory. Haret's gonna hit go mode here shortly, which is gonna be good for him. So we should see... There's probably a... Four... Four... Five? Five minute-ish? Five minutes, maybe. Not even. Five-ish minutes between Haret and Dragon right now, because Haret's just gonna be able to go straight to D6 after this. Jangler found his seed satchel at some point in D1 and is now in D3. Chat, we've made it to D3 with Jangler. All right, we're, we've started, we, we're good, we're good, we're here. Everything's good to go. Jangler technically only needs the level two boomerang. <laughs> so, Jang okay, so here's, okay, here's what's happened here. Dragon tried to throw away his lead, his pretty significant lead here. Uh, but he, he remembered at the last second. And is going to be able to skip all the extra checks in D6 and just go. Everyone's going to be able to. So he's he's good for that. Heret here took a different route from the other three early on. And it just didn't... It looked like it didn't pay off in the same way. Um, Mashi, for the most part, has been following the same route as Dragon. Although he did find his X-Gem. So he's, he's fine. He's gonna be finishing shortly here. Jangler seemed to have started on the same route as Dragon and then made the, the he, he never found the D1 key early on. So he couldn't do that to find his seed satchel, would put him on a different mindset than the other runners. He could have gone to D3, he didn't. He went to D8 before D3 with five hearts. Let that soak in just for a second. Uh, after having done a bunch of out of logic plays that didn't pay off. Did five heart D8, then did D5, did did every other dungeon, then finally went to got the D1 key and went to D1. D3 is gonna be his second to last dungeon, even though it was available to him as his second dungeon. And he's he's managed to pull ahead of Mashi in the meantime, because he started out being behind Mashi because of those out of logic checks. But because he made the big brain D8 play, he was able to scrounge his way into third, uh, at least for the restream, assuming that, I don't know, I don't know how the, the, uh, those off the restream are doing, but... This, it was, this, this is, this is Dragon, the story of this rando has been Dragon trying to throw away a seed and Jangler doing the sickest route of all time and, and just 
I, I can't even, I don't even know. I can't even explain what Jangler did, but it, it worked out for him. So the D6 route that we're looking at here with Dragon is much different than a vanilla D6. Because we have Magic Boomerang and our Cape, we can skip the entire right side of D6. So D6, we'd be able to skip potentially, I think it's two or three small keys and like four chests, four or five chests, if boss key is on this left side. So left side has three chests, or so there's one, two, three, four. So the quick route, you have four chests that you can potentially get boss key in. And then the, the other side, the right side, has one, two, three, four chests as well. So it's kind of like a 50-50 on whether or not you'll get the boss key. If you do get the boss key, you save yourself a bunch of time in D6 and get to skip a significant chunk of it. Um, which is pretty sick. Ages D6. Ages D6 is split into two separate dungeons. Ages D6 is the only dungeon in either Oracle's game that you have the potential to skip entirely because the boss is only in one of the D6s in Ages. So there's a potential that you find the boss key in the D6 with the boss and you never have to touch the other D6. But that's the only that's the only potentially skippable dungeon in any of the Oracle games for the randomizer. Jangler is in fact going to D6 without the boomerang. So you know what's cr <laughs> he's he's so he's here's the play that Jangler's making. Jangler's making the play that I thought Dragon might make if he found square or he found the X jewel before he found the magic boomerang. Where he has these gems and he has everything except for boomerang. So he's making the risky play and hoping that boomerang is either on the way to D6 or in D6. Realistically, if he had just gone and done his check, done the check that has Boomerang first before he did this, he just made a big brain play and got the Boomerang, he would be tied with, if not only like a minute behind Heredaman. So Jangler was very, very close to potentially being second place here, despite his very wonky route. Um, so there's... There's... Jangler's route has been kind of, it's super interesting. And and I mean, if you've been here the whole time, you've seen how, how drastically different Jangler's route was. And yet, despite all that, one different decision before he came here could have put him basically tied for second place. That's, that's like, so there's a lot of variation in potential routes that you can take throughout the the season's randomizer and still end up with a similar time um dragon's gonna sub too as long as he doesn't mess up onyx's castle on a side note jangler's route wasn't a backup strat so jangler's route i i'm pretty sure what jangler's route was was he forgot that he had the d3 key and he thought his only option was to go into d8 D8 happened to be loaded with a D4 key and a season. So he got progression there despite it being out of logic and not really the the the, the obvious play. He just decided to take a different route and it paid off pretty big for him and actually did save him a lot of time in the long run. Um There are no there's no entrance randomizer there's no plans for there to be an entrance randomizer on Jangler's part. Everything is open source. Like, Jangler's made everything available, so if anyone wanted to dev an, open, an entrance randomizer, they'd be able to do that. Um, as far as combining seasons and ages into one game, the answer is pretty much it's not going to happen unless someone wants to go and do it. Uh, because it would kind of require sort of a rebuilding of the games from the ground up. Like, it, it, it's a much more lengthy process than <laughs> you might imagine. Um, so it'd be a lot more difficult, and Jangler's just not interested in, in doing a cross-world sort of thing there. 
but it is technically possible, but it's just not going to happen on Jangler's end. Um, but yeah, so Dragon here. Dragon's going in. Dragon collected his eight essences, and he is on his way. He's on his way to Onyx's castle, our final boss. As long as he doesn't royally screw up on Onyx, he'll be finished here in the next two and a half minutes, I would say. So we're gonna see, like, we're almost certainly gonna see a sub two from Dragon. Uh, Heret's pretty close behind. I don't think Heret's gonna sub two. Um, so we're probably not gonna see that. Dangler's about to be super disappointed in uh, in his decision to go to D6 here, which is unfortunate. Because I it would have been super awesome. It would have been super awesome to uh, if if Jangler had found his magic boomerang. Jangler and Heret would be super neck and neck, and it, it would be a very very interesting to see those two different routes come together in a way that allows for it to be that neck and neck. And we were pretty close to that. Um, um, yeah. So here we go. Dragon entering into the Onox fight. You're going to see Dragon, even though he has the Fool's Ore, and again, remind, for those that are just now coming, the Noble Sword has a strength of three. So the level 1 sword has a strength of 2, the level 2 sword has a strength of 3, the, level, the Fool's Ore has a strength of 20. Um, he's not using the Fool's Ore on this first phase of the fight because the only way to damage Onox in this form is with a Spin Slash. So the Fool's Ore can't actually damage in that phase. But what we are going to see, potentially, is an item swap here. Or not, maybe. Are you going to swap items or are you just going to go? All right. So we're going to see... Normally, this is nine spin slashes, eight spin slashes. But instead here, we have three hits with the Fool's War, and it's done. Bada bing, bada boom. Well, and that is a GG's for that, a dragon. That was anticlimactic. <laughs> the big bad dragon appears and gets three shot because Fool's Ore is sick. Fool's Ore does do item. Fool's Ore does I or sorry, wow. Fool's Ore does do damage. It does damage in vanilla, but in vanilla it's locked to the one portion of the game that is dedicated to hide and seek. But in this game, it's thrown into the item pool. So if you can find it, it's a pretty nice uh, time. All right. And it looks like Dragon's gonna hop in here for a little interview. <laughs> in a little bit so we can I can berate him about uh not doing the early village check to find X gem. Hello. Hello. Well, well, well. GG's on the uh the sub 2 156 <laughs> flat. 166 or 156 flat or 155 59 on the SRL. Yeah, so sub 156 sub 156. Sub 156. So <laughs> the the obvious thing that's coming up is at the end here, uh, you had two items that you needed to find after D4, the Magic Boomerang and X-Gem. And you, you found the, the, the Magic Boomerang pretty so early. I was so surprised there was a Boomerang and all the two ones. I know. <laughs> it was so confusing. It was... You got that early Boomerang, and then uh, you did a lot of searching for the X-Gem, and you, uh, you, you skipped over... Could be anywhere. You skipped over the five second check in town but it seemed like you did you forget about it or what i just forgot about it it's so early in the game normally you already get bracelet pretty early and i just never got got back to it but i know that we were waiting to see uh waiting to see how long it ended up taking because every every check that was wrong heret already had had already had his x gem and boomerang so we were waiting to see how what the overlap would be if he would be able to catch up there yeah. but you did it you found it you remembered there's not enough junk checks for me to waste enough time i even had to do ores and hard ore thing the smithy that's the that's the biggest time waste because i thought that was my last check 
to get yeah. in trouble. Unlocking the furnace and then going with your, the red and blue to, to combine them. I was 100% sure it was there. <laughs> and then I see a small rupee and I'm like, no, I forgot something. <laughs> We saw, saw some re-dungeon diving to check the map and see if you had <laughs> done all the checks. I, I, I knew I, I screwed around in Dungeon 2, so I double-checked Dungeon 2 to, just to make sure. So how do you, how just... do you... Outside of those last two checks, how do you feel about the, the seed? It's a fast seed. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Pretty quick. We saw, um... You, you, Mashi, and Jangler all sort of started out with the same route. I know Heret, Heret swapped around. Uh, he didn't do D7 until pretty late, but I like the... That was the the early... The D7 entrance save scum of... Realizing you didn't have bombs, so you Gale Seed to D2. To go into the entrance that doesn't save your warp point. Yeah. To be able to buy bombs from the scrub. And then do a save and quit to get all the way back to D7 was yeah. that was the plays. Heret's out of bombs. On a side I note, forgot, I forgot to get the rupees next to the ghost house. I burned the tree and I went inside and I forgot to get them, which kind of screwed oh, me yeah. because I couldn't buy the shovel at that time. Uh, we see uh, on with Heret right now. Heret's out of bombs on facade. He needs to get a bomb drop from these spiders, or he's gonna be stuck at facade for a hot minute. Jangler is still searching for the magic boomerang, which yeah. is unfortunate on his part. Um, uh, Heret is, finally gets a bomb drop. Oh my goodness. Damn, that's not that slow, actually. As not able to sub 2, even with a good facade, I don't think it would have been a sub 2, but... Entering into Onyx now. Doesn't have the level 2 sword, so his first phase here is going to be a little bit sloppier than uh, Dragon's was. But he's going to be finishing up here shortly. Mashi, meanwhile, is about to clean up on D4. He's also about to find his Square Jewel, which is going to put him in the same boat as Jangler. So they're both going to only need their Magic Boomerang. Jangler's ahead just because he's already... He's already gone to D6 once and cleared it out. Mashi is gonna probably be tempted to go try and find Magic Boomerang inside D6, but he's not gonna find it there, which is uh, gonna be disappointing. Or he'll make the big brain play and find Magic Boomerang in the the uh, fall cave above D1. And Red here entering into the dragon. Guys, Fool's Or gonna do the quick three hit, assuming that he doesn't fall off. And that is a dot done with four Herets with an SRL time of 201.58. So a little over, almost six minutes. I was it was closer to five minutes, but facade kind of jabated him. So Strong finish from, uh, strong finish from Heret here. And that brings us down to Mashi and Jangler, who are just, so Mashi, Mashi now with his square jewel, he has all the gems, all he's looking for is Magic Boomerang. Uh, it looks like Jangler is going back into D3. I think Jangler thinks that he either he skipped the chest and is now going back for it, or he's doing a check and he's not sure. He's definitely going back. Yeah, so he, he might not have gone to the Vanilla Boss key check. Yeah. So he's going to check Vanilla Boss key to try and find it there, but he's not going to find anything. And it'll be another situation of how long it'll take him to realize that he hasn't done the fall cave check. Because as of right now, we don't know whether or not it's on his radar and he just is putting it not as a priority or if he thinks that he already did it or has forgotten about his, its existence entirely. And he seems to be going deeper into 
I may have missed how Jangler routed D3 initially, but he's going back in, which... Uh, please believe he skipped a couple of checks here. If he beeline straight for Mathula and then left without doing any checks, then I can understand why this is tempting. Unfortunately, it's not going to pan out, though. Dun, dun, dun. Again, nothing here. Mashi is going to make that unfortunate mistake. I mean, it's not necessarily a routing mistake, but because he has his jewels first, he's going to go to d6, hoping to find the boomerang on the way, and is going to get punched as well. So, a it's big a brain play, play from Mashi. It is a good it's play. A good it's definitely play. the right play if you if you don't have it, but it's just not going to pay off in the the way that uh, we're hoping for. If Mashi had made a big brain play and just done some overworld checks and found the boomerang, he would end up getting back ahead of Jangler. But because he's going to go ahead and make this play, he's going to find himself uh, still behind. And depending on how long it takes Jangler to find that overworld check, uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It is really now just going to come down to... This could go either way. Essentially, it depends on, on how Jangler, aware Jangler is of his overall checks. I know Jangler has forgotten single checks in the past that have ruined him. I mean, everyone has in this game. Yeah, we, I mean, yes, we all have. Dragon, Dragon forgot a single check that <laughs> cost him <laughs> a pretty good chunk of time there. Which is, which is, it's a little sad. It's a little sad to see Jangler struggling here to find that last item because his his route was very unique and different, and with just one little tweak would have really changed the outcome of, of his placement. Would have put him in potentially second place. Here. Mashi making his way. Dangler finishing strong. Throughout this dungeon. <laughs> Gonna be sorely disappointed by the Rock's Feather chest having absolutely nothing in it. I mean, it had the, the Swimmer's Ring, I think. <laughs> it did have the Swimmer's Ring, but it's not, uh, not gonna be useful at this point. We I mean, he still, has, he still has to swim to, like, the boomerang, <laughs> so it, it's, it is <laughs> still useful. That is true. Heret has shown up in the chat. GG's Heret on the second place. <laughs> Swimmer's Ring has not a whole lot of value on, uh, at the end of the run. Where is he going now? He's going to... Oh, is it Heret? That took a while. Quick, everyone Hi, hide, there. it's her red. Ah! Uh, this rando... Hold on, I'll do the interview in a second. Uh, this rando has last existed for... four or five months, is that right? Am I right? Uh, since... August? Maybe? So that's about... four... seven months. Seven months, okay, so longer. So it's, yeah, it's been about seven months, over, over half a year then. That it's been in existence. So, uh, the first thing yeah, I wanted to say is. when I finished the race and I went in here for the interview, uh, I wanted to tell everyone to go watch A Link Between Worlds coming up right here or maybe on the first channel. I don't know. Unfortunately, that got cancelled mid race. So, oops. Good talk. Yeah. So the there is a there is a uh, there's a Discord for the Oracle games. Um, that is it's this both the speedrunning Discord and the randomizer Discord are combined. Oh, there you go. The the uh, yeah. So what Trez just 
linked in the uh, the chat. So if you're interested in the randomizer, all the necessary info is there. We're all there in the Discord to give assistance as uh, as needed as well. Um, and we're all fairly active. Um, we do the weeklies. We've been, I mean, we've been doing these weekly races for a couple months at this point. We've been doing them every Sunday for a long while. Um, so this is the first time that we, we were noticed. We were noticed by uh, Papa Trez and he decided to grace us with his presence in a, a venue to have a restream and show some more people and hopefully get some more people interested in looking at the game. Oh since boy. It's, it, is, it is a very... I'm a big fan of the randomizer. I'm a very, very big fan of this randomizer and, and highly recommend it to anyone to try it out because it is very, um, it's it's friendly to new players if you're playing on the normal mode and the those of us that are in the Discord are, are more than happy to help out with stuff. We have Jangler still on the search. Going for Great Moblin over doing the Fall Cave. Mashi's about to clear out D6 and realize that Magic Boomerang isn't there. And then he'll begin his same path. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, if Mashi, at this point, if Mashi decides to leave D6 and go straight to the Fall Cave, then Mashi's in the lead. Although if Mashi dies before he gets to this last chest, the vanilla, the vanilla Magic Boomerang chest is going to be ugly for, uh, Oh no! So, right, well, I assume that my play to avoid completely uh, avoid going to the mountain completely for basically as it was bad, but looking at everybody you now looking for the boomerang, I guess I actually actually did something good. Yeah, not going there. We we saw that um, you you you're. <laughs> It was funny to watch your your aversion to uh, going into D8 uh, towards the middle there of like you were doing every overall check before you decided to go into D8 was was amusing and it, you did find the boomerang so it paid off because you didn't end up having to look for it. Actually, I couldn't really go to D8. Uh, I was missing winter and winter was in the mountain and I didn't go to the mountain until oh, I basically did everything yeah. else. I see. I didn't realize. Okay, so then that okay, so then it makes sense. It wasn't as weird of a play then. I didn't realize that you were missing winter. Mashy going for Black Beast. That's a good Black Beast is a good check to do. It's I mean it's just a especially since Mystery Seeds are locked behind Tarm, it makes sense to check, but not paying off this time. Yeah, technically speaking. Uh, according to the game's logic, at least, we had to deep D8 just to get a way to get to Tarn. That's not fun. Uh, yep, D8 was required to, uh, to finish, sorry, to, to get to, to D6. Which is always fun. Any time that D8 is required to get access to anything is, is just a great time. Uh, I know that it's your favorite thing, Heron. Like, uh, like Onox's Castle. That's my favorite. Like Onox's Castle, get yes. by. By finishing the eight. Here's the the fun fact of of seasons rando is that in the first version of the rando, Dangler had not put the essence requirements in place, and in vanilla Oracle of Seasons, the check for the Maku seed to get into Onyx's castle only checks to see if you have the eighth essence, and uh, but Jangler had removed the check to get to D8 to see whether or not you had the required essences to get to D8. So you could get to D8 if you had the items. If you had the items, you could just go straight to D8, get the D8 essence, go, oh my goodness. Mashi just found the magic boomerang. Jangler's still looking for the magic boomerang. Mashi goes and pulls ahead of Jangler. Shout so out to, to Jangler swallowing the bait entirely and yeah. going to the furnace. And he's Jangler not going to. Taking Furnace Bait, taking Black Beast Bait now. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. Wait. So it looks like uh, we are going to flip around. Where was uh, Noel Sword? Uh, it was underwater next to D4. Oh, right. Basically, one of the two checks I had left. 
<laughs> so yeah, so start out it was it was a Mashi and Jangler had swapped places early on there, and with Jangler looking like he could take it for third, but bad overworld routing or unlucky overworld routing just costing him the uh the boomerang. And it looks like he's actually going to that check right now. So he's gonna pick up the magic boomerang. So we could see potentially if if Maggi has a rough castle, we could see Jangler. Don't forget take it Jangler. Back. I think Jangler already beat fire. So he can warp to the middle Jangler of the can't, He can't beat fire without magic boomerang. Never mind then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. No, <laughs> there's so there's it's it's just gonna come down to execution at this point. Um Jangler's like a minute behind right now, so maybe more. It's gonna come come down to Besides. whether they wait for my handler or not, basically. <laughs> basically, I mean, there are a couple of points it could swap. It could swap at Manhandla, uh, because Manhandla's a boss. Um, it could swap at Facade if someone doesn't check their bomb count and doesn't have enough bombs. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> or it could be if someone chokes on Onyx and uh, either falls off onyx falls off onyx in phase two dies to onyx in general um so there's there's potential there for a swing and it's just going to come down to the execution on the part of mashi and jangler here and we know that we've seen mashi has had a couple of unintentioned unintended deaths so it, it would not be terribly surprising uh if if we do see an execution error on his part it would Jangler could could easily make a comeback. Um, but yeah, so we are we're approaching that end there. And she does have a heart refill. He's a lot of hearts. I do know the uh, Jangler took a very different route from the rest of you. He took the uh, oh no. Well, I was talking about execution and it being sort of determined of of what could happen here, but <laughs> Jangler just died. Yep. So uh, not a good look. On his end, he didn't die very far into the dungeon, so it's not like a huge time loss. But at a time like this, every little bit is going to be uh, pretty significant. So, what did Jangler do at the start? Did Jangler you... did Jangler did D eight with five hearts. Um, so Jangler didn't do Jangler never checked Goron Mountain. The three of you checked Goron Mountain and got your D one keys. Jangler never checked. The mountain, so he never got D1 key, which meant he never got seed special. Um, but he got like cape and summer and bracelet and all these other things, and then he got the D3 key. So he had the D3 key and summer and everything he needed to beat D3, but instead of going to D3, he went to D8. Um, he could have done D3, he could have done D5, but he did he did D8 instead. And then went to D5. Basically, he could have done D3 second, but he did D3 second to last. And which was terrible for him because the second seed satchel was on Mothula. And because he never checked Goron Mountain, he never got the first seed satchel. But because of how he ended up routing, his first seed satchel ended up being the one in D1. But it was the one in D1 at an hour and 40 minutes instead of at 20 minutes like the rest of you. So he was... He was playing from behind, but his route, because he went to D8 so early, it sort of worked in his favor. And there was a point where the two of you, you, Huret, and Jangler, were on basically the same screen in Lost Woods. And if Jangler had had his magic boomerang at that point, or if he had just checked to get boomerang and been like just a little bit behind you, with with your facade, it would have been like a very close <laughs> second place fight out for the two of you, but he just he did not find that. But it was it was just interesting how different his route was, and yet it came back, and you guys were like, you guys were fairly close overall. I mean, you either go to D8 extremely early, or you <laughs> do it last, <laughs> unless it's required to not do last. Yeah. But five hearts, who would do that? I know. I know. Jangler here. <clears throat> Jangler did make a smart play here early on, where he. When he came here the first time, he saved scum the right side because it because it might not have had anything. And he didn't have to go pick up that extra key outside of Vire. Matchy did. 
again, it's not that's not a huge time difference, but at, at how close they are at this point, it is uh, significant to say the least. So we're gonna see how how well Mashi executes on Manhandler here, and how lucky Jangler gets with his button pushes, as this button is RNG 50-50 and you can't manip it. So, you know. I mean, you could. But who would do that? After Vire, especially? Doesn't After really work out. a room full of keys. <laughs> it's a bold move. Silas would probably try to do it. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Mashi. Manhandler. Manhandler is Manhandler. Getting manhandled. And we're seeing here both of both of these players will finish under the 230 mark. Almost certainly. Barring a, you know, tragic execution error on Onyx. Without a safety save or anything. He doesn't wait um, for the ring. Okay. He I does. didn't see what the ring was. No. A mashy gain out as Jingle was about to enter in. So it's going to come down to Facade and Onyx at this point. Let's actually switch over to the two-player layout so we can focus on the two of them a little bit more. Okay. Sure, go ahead. I feel like uh, powering level two or three, rather, with normal sword is harder for Onyx than any, any other better setups. Or, you know what I mean. I was taking I way too much damage for the damage I was doing. Yeah, I don't mess with. Level 1 sword and power level 3 ring is, is a bad combo for Onyx. What do we got? It's the price you pay for going fast and not checking every single location. <laughs> True. Alright, so... Mashi on the way to the castle. Jangler gonna be done with d6 here. Come on, Jangler. We do want... It's, it's, it's impossible not to root for the upset. It's just, you know, you can't not. It's been a back and forth between these two a couple of times, so coming to be within a minute of each other at this point is, is pretty good. Since Mashi actually has the ring, unless he doesn't have any bombs, he's definitely gonna win. Mashi has True. seven bombs, I believe. So he Mashi has fine. seven bombs? I mean, if he gets holes multiple times, he could get there. If you just play it safe, you're fine. Yeah. Look at that, I think... Um, oh! What? Jangler? Jangler? Mists. How and did you... Pick Listen. Up... Well... Wait, 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 what just happened? He missed Dungeon 5 Essence. How do you even... Maybe he safe scumped it. What? Did he kill... I wonder if he killed Dig Dogger, but... He no went way. back? Did he pull a dragon then? Kill no, the boss hasn't... and go back for items? He did... No, he did that for D3, but it's not... There's no reason to, to dip back after Big Dogger. I'm trying That's... to think. I mean, I had to dip back. I mean, I save get, is coming. Save's coming. Save's coming, Dig Dogger is a weird play. But oh, I mean, wow. after no, you finish D5... Uh, okay. Yeah, he probably saves scummed it and three keys. Yeah. That sucks. Cause he's not. I mean, yeah, no. So Mashi's Mashi's gonna secure third here. But... I think the problem here is that Jungler is not used to using tracker, so he probably pre-marked it. <coughs> that might be true. So yeah, I mean, story. if if Mashi if Mashi Mashi needs to choke on uh. Onyx pretty hard here. That's not gonna happen. To happen. It's not gonna happen. He has level two sword and he has the full sword, so. And a power ring. I don't think he equipped. And a power it. ring. I didn't see it. No, he would have been in the, the second phase at that point. He did too many spin slashes. Oh wait, no, maybe. Level one only is six, I believe. Instead of seven. Maybe he just mashed, and didn't even. He's taking a lot of damage ring. right now. I mean, it doesn't matter. Too maybe much. he thinks he's. Very, very close, and equipping He's a ring will probably right now. make him Oh my goodness! Ah! 
Oh no. <laughs> Mashi, don't! No! Oh, the falling rocks! Anything could happen! <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so Mashi, Mashi is very good about doing the save scum. So oh, he's God. good. He did the save scum. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, if Jangler can can execute perfectly and if Mashi has another sloppy fight... Oh my. Okay. Don't get grabbed by a hand, Mashi. Don't get grabbed by a hand. Get grabbed by... Okay. Good. I mean... You should have picked up those bombs. You should have picked up the bombs. Mashi, you should have just gone and picked up the bombs <laughs> to be safe. Alright. One... Uh, early holes. That's not good. It's not gonna happen, there's no way. Okay, he's fine. Jangler only has one extra seed. I mean... Oh, he does only have one seed. It, it is gonna matter entirely on if he dies to Onyx again. He went into Onyx with full hearts last time and died. He's probably just gonna play it safer this time. And, and take it slower. So... We'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. Oh, the double. Okay. Uh... Doesn't have the feather or the cape equipped right now. That was weird. That was a weird trigger into the second part of the phase. Oh, you want to move, my dude. Uh, it's uh, it's Mashi's favorite corner. He's, he's already been there does twice. He, does he always do that? Oh, no. Yeah, he did that. Not always, but okay, he's been so like he has, three times already. He has four hearts. As long as he, I mean, he has full Zor, so he's fine for. He's fine as long as he doesn't fall off and then get fire into fireballs or something. Or fire just fireballs and, and choke. Don't fall off, Mashi. Don't fall off. <gasps> oh my god! No! <laughs> What's happening? Don't don't die. Okay, we're good. No! Mashi! Okay, okay, you got it. Don't okay, you got it. You got it. No! Oh my goodness. Oh it's a sweep, it's a sweep. He's fine. No! <laughs> oh my god! Mashi! No. Oh no. Mashi died. Okay. Oh balls. And Jangler's taking massive damage right now and it's into rocks. This is this is okay. Uh ma okay. Jangler, okay, Jangler's into phase two, or into into Dronix, into Dragononix with one heart. As long as he doesn't get hit, pulls out the full or and gets the the three hit combo with the full Zor, all will be well and he will secure third place, although at this point. <laughs> it could flip flop either way. Come on. Come on. One, two. Three. All right, so that's that is a that is a dot done. He's secured it. He's he's not. <laughs> wow. Wow. Best comments. Dangler's comments of do not save scum's <laughs> essences. A good good hot tech hot tip. Twitch chat. If you're ever curious whether or not you should save scum your essences, the answer is no. You should not, in fact, save scum essences. Not the good play. I'm sure Mashi kicking himself a little bit because he knows that he died to to Dronix and he died to Onyx once, so uh, can't he can't feel too good about that. But hopefully he's not got any more like tension or or stress about it. You can just clean up, play it safe. Don't have to worry about much. Focus on getting the, the kill. Okay. He does... Meshi really does like that corner, huh? It's the best corner. He was going back there again. <laughs> okay, so he's going to go into phase two... Or, uh... I mean, yeah, phase two. Into Dragon Onyx. Without losing that many hearts. 
So we, we, we should see him dot done here. And we should still see the sub 230 from Mashi. So it's looking like all runners sub 230, or all, all the restream runners on, on sub 230. And I think that sub 230 is a, is a uh, safe number to expect. Alright. So we have. Oh. And he got it. Ooh. Falling off again. Mashi frustrated. We have a dot done from Fiery Blizzard. Not on the restream, but getting a 2907. Doing, uh. Getting. Slightly into fourth. So able to steal fourth from Mashi, which I'm sure is frustrating. But Mashi there, dot done. With the 229-23 SRL time, getting the sub 230, sliding to fifth place. I can't believe Mashi took so long. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you Mashi. still do Veran being way easier. It's true. GG. GG's to all of our runners. Uh, we do have a couple active off off the restream still, but. If we want. Yeah. Uh, Sublime is almost on. Basically at the top of D6. Bladefang is way behind, unfortunately. Yeah, we know, we know Bladefang and Sour, they're, they're currently finishing up. Yeah, but, I mean, uh... Blade just started getting really into yeah. it, right? So, this but... is the... I think Blade said... I was talking to him earlier. I think Blade said this was like the third seed that he had actually done. Or like the third seed that he's going to be finishing. So, it's, uh, yeah. So we're going to pull Jangler in here for a, for an interview, which I'm excited for, because I want to talk to him. I want to talk to him about uh, his route before we head off into the night. All right, let's say hi to Mashi first. Jangler is on his okay. way. Hey, Mashi. Hey! Ooh, you're so Mashi. loud! Oh boy! <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was painful. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, the... We saw, it was you and Jangler, I mean, we, because on the restream it was you and Jangler, we had a situation where you were, like, a minute ahead of Jangler, and then Jangler had to go get the D5 essence because he save scummed it. And then we came back and you saw that you had a couple of issues there with with Onyx, the very end, the classic. Yeah. Onyx, hardest boss in the game. I know that feel. I live that feel. What, and I, what, I what dropped the the um the combo on Dragon Onyx when I had one hit left, mm -hmm. and that's when Jangler and Fiery both came in and sniped me. <laughs> yeah, we. We were expecting. I know it was. It was you and Jangler throughout the entire race had had a couple of back and forths where you were ahead and then Jangler overtook and then you were back ahead of him and then and then it was looking like Jangler was pulling away until it came to the magic boomerang because Jangler got super lost looking for it and you found it pretty immediately. Oh yeah, and, like, and, and then you were good to go. I had a feeling it was going to be in that spot because that spot always has something. Yeah. <laughs> The the fall cave that 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 fall cave of D one is is a, is a good spot. It's a nice nice spot for uh, no. Like, it's a terrible um, spot. It's I mean, you know, it, it's a nice spot in that it has items. Not a nice spot in that it's a good spot. <laughs> right, right. It it always um, tends to have something, but it's a, yeah. an annoying check to do. So outside of outside of the last ten minutes of uh, that sort of onyx hell, how do you how would you feel about the seed overall? I felt like it was okay up until the end. Hmm. I know that. I mean, the search. I know I've, I'm very vocal about the search for Magic Boomerang being the go item is my least favorite. It's my least favorite go item in anything uh, for seasons. Yeah. That's why I didn't make it my go item. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that. Uh, yeah, that was. That was I'm trying to think if there was anything in particular that was. 
different. I mean, it seemed like the route was pretty standard, and you were you were following the the logic for the most part. Was there anything that you felt was big brain or off um, the norm? I'm trying to think if there's anything that I kind of. No, I felt like I was just following the route, like the following the logic as mm -hmm. much as I could. It's, that's what it, that's what I was yeah that's what it seemed like on our end as well. Or it seemed like you and Dragon had mostly a similar route for outside of a couple of differences with regards to like overall checks and stuff. But that the dungeon riding was pretty similar between the two of you. And then I know that Herat had a different route and Jangler had a very different route. Like the the one like big brain play that I tried to make was going into D six for uh, a French vanilla yeah. boomerang. Yeah. The, but that, uh, was... that didn't pay off, obviously. Yeah. Both. Uh, I mean, Dragon was lucky in that he found boomerang before the ge the last gem, so he didn't have to get dragged into that. And I know Heret because uh, of his routing ended up picking up boomerang pretty early. Heret got boomerang super early <laughs> uh, compared to to everyone else um but that, yeah, in, that, uh, in the moment i felt like i was doing the worst possible route but then it paid off because everyone decided to go to other places that were not optimal and found actual useful items instead of garbage <laughs> yeah i mean d yeah it's so hard anytime you have access to d6 and you don't have boomerang you're you're in a pinch of like it's so many checks it's so many checks to go to D6, and it could so easily be there because it, it, it doesn't have any of the requirements to not be there. But yeah, and and of there. course, getting the seed tree up there as well. Yeah, it's an easy easy return point, and in some cases, in this case, everyone had their seeds early on, except for mystery seeds. But that's not as big of a deal since D8 was pretty uh, middle of the road as far as yeah, you go. could just get them in Frypolar's room. Yeah. Do we have that? Do we have... Is is the young Jangler coming in today? He's oh. technically ready. Oh. They are both in the waiting room and I just didn't see him. Sorry, guys. Oh, right. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Uh, it's, it's going good. Jangler? Jangler. We need to <laughs> uh, here's a couple of I just want to start out about some things. Um like a dungeon order <laughs> so so first yeah so i know the most recent one because people were here and it was the end was you you saved scum the d5 essence which is a rough call <laughs> in general but but we'll get to that we'll get to that in a little bit hold on we'll get to that <laughs> that that's not even the tip of the iceberg <laughs> we're gonna move back here to a point in time where jangler had summer cape bracelet sword and the d3 key as uh, available to him as his second dungeon and i want to know why um you put that off until uh your second to last dungeon because that's that's honestly I, I i'm curious to know what what was going on there and then you did five heart d8 which is insane without satchel so <laughs> i'm really and then what was crazy about it was that had you had found Magic Boomerang, any like if you had found Magic Boomerang before you went to D6, like if you had just checked it randomly, you would have been basically on par with Heret, if not only like 30 seconds behind for second place. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, t t t talk to me, talk to me. Just <laughs> explain yourself and please explain what happened. So I have no clue what the intended sequence for that seed was because I broke logic too much. Yes. Um, all I knew is that shovel was behind member's card, was behind I don't remember what, but something I did much later. Um, but so I got all the things I needed, needed to do D7. I was like, okay, it's not often that I get to do D7 as the first dungeon in my seat. So I did that, and then I got everything I needed to do with uh, D8, so I did the same thing. <laughs> what? Just for fun. <laughs> so. And this, but you also had everything for D3. I want to like to make this clear. But doing and D3 it, early happens a lot. So this was, well, what was upsetting to me was I was in the middle of talking about how it was objectively the wrong thing to do. 
And then you got both the D4 key. You got both the D4 key and spring while I was in the middle of explaining why this was a bad play. And then I was like, oh, well. All, all right. the seasons <laughs> I got were, were like super out of sequence. Like there was, yeah. I have, it just there messed me up. Super early logic break because you bomb jumped over Sabrosia. Because you had never gone to Goron Mountain to get the, go the D1 key to get the mm -hmm. satchel in D1 early on, which everyone else had their satchel at around 20 minutes or so. Because <laughs> yeah, so that was that was another thing that was so crazy to me as to why, like, if you had just grabbed Boomerang, if you had gotten lucky with your Boomerang check, then you would have been almost tied with Heret for a second. Was like that you didn't have satchel until a minute, an hour 40 in, and I was I was that's it was, so it was weird, bewildering. It was so crazy, um, but yeah. And then yeah, it was the annoying thing was that I, I did those things and I didn't get punished for those. What I got punished for was just checking the wrong overworld things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was 100% overworld. The, Could be wrong. I would not be surprised because I know that you had like a five minute lead on Mashi in going into looking for Boomerang, and then Mashi found Boomerang before you. Uh, because it was like his second or third overworld check, like mm -hmm. around that area. And then you got it maybe 30 seconds after he did, so you were trailing behind. And then... Mashi had <laughs> trouble with Onox. Mashi had trouble with Onox. Yeah. And you you saved Scum D5. What, I did do that. You, I want to please explain why Yeah, I want to know what happened D5. here. <laughs> okay, so I did Dig Dogger first before I checked the last two things in D5 because mm -hmm. it's the better play because if it's not yes. map or compass uh, then I can just leave uh, what I was thinking was that if I reset then my save point, I, I already have a save point at the beginning of the dungeon I did not, I did not have that or I did rather uh, so I, th I thought everything was fine but it was, uh, you know, before I got the essence so that was a bit of a problem oh. so, okay wait but <laughs> hold on <laughs> So you you killed Dig Dogger and then you were resetting. I killed Dig Dogger. I went back in to get um, the other items to check the. Oh, you did the yeah. Between picking up the essence and going back yes, in for the other. Yes, that is correct. Oh, okay, okay, I understand. Okay, so that's less. That's not as. Okay, I got it. That's that was that was unfortunate because you were yeah. I mean, Mashi got really screwed by Onyx, uh, but like you were. 45-ish seconds behind after Mashi picked up the seed and gone to Onyx, and then we saw you go into <laughs> go into the Maku tree and then promptly walked out as you got nothing. And it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> something something's gonna ride here. Yep. Um, yep. but he still still. What was everyone else's dungeon order? I don't even remember. I. I I can't remember. I, I, I think I went D1, 2, two 5, seven. 7, 8, 4, 6, or 3, 4, 6. I think it was something like that. That sounds like the order I did. I'm pretty sure I did 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 4, 6. I don't know. <laughs> I, think I, did, I think I did one. Dragon did. Dragon doesn't. Perfect. Don't just does it. Hey, but I have a checker, so I can check my vault, and it's easy. Um, guys, so this is actually a little weird, but I kind of need to end the stream now. For whatever reason, my second respawn for the stream that starts in eight minutes uh, had to drop out last minute, so I have to cover the stream, which means oh. I, I gotta get set uh, up. I hope you understand. Uh, um, yeah, no problem. problem. Yeah, I, ha fine. I had a lot of fun actually doing this, and I'm looking forward to doing this more in the future and in the next weeks, if you are down to do it. Because this was fun. I want to give a big shout-out to Foyer Nomenon for doing, um, like, no shit, hands down, awesome commentary. Because I didn't know jack shit about Seasons Render when we started tonight, and now I feel a little more enlightened, so... That's what I'm here for, here to help, help get it across, help people get familiar with it uh, again if you want to join the discord if if someone wants to post the discord again people are free to join hop into the community 
Um, yeah, especially since this was the first one, I wanted to make it pretty educational <laughs> as far as like what we were talking about. Since, since I know that Seasons is not doesn't have the notoriety that you know Zooter does or Link to the Past. Um, but yeah, as we, as we do more of these, I think it'll be it'll be good to to uh, keep on doing it. It was fun, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Trez, for doing the restream and and getting some more eyes on the community as a whole. I think it's cool. Yep. Um, but yeah, and shout outs to everyone that was doing the run. Shout outs to all the people that got restreamed, and GGs to everyone that was running. GGs to everyone that was watching, and I hope you all had a good time. GGs. GG everyone. GG. GGs. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next random stream of Alcohol of Seasons.